Messi! When you think you've seen it all in boxing, Sabalenka being crowned champion. Once again, showing the world why he is the greatest. Left hook on the temple, unbelievable. He starts with a special showcase now. It's an absolute monster of a lightweight. She wasn't going for goal, but she'll happily accept it. It's gone all the way through, and look at this! Joinder! Did you dare rate Barcelona off? The career of one of the all-time greats is all but over. He must come back. Uma oportunidade de dizer alguma coisa que eu, que eu acho que nunca disse. NFL Game Pass is now exclusively on the zone. Let's get this thing going. Watch every game, plus the playoffs and Super Bowl. To the it's your all-access pass. Well on his way to coming back. Katie Taylor does it again. Look at the emotion. The following program is recommended for those 16 and over as it contains sporting violence, possible bad language, and flashing imagery. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this ring, the fight is now! So close. How do you like it? Close the show. Hollywood, California, the site for the Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney final press conference earlier in the week. They were in New York going back and forth. They were setting it up for today's final press conference from the Avalon Theater in Hollywood, California. Golden Boys put on some fights in this building. Today it's a press conference. Hopefully there's no fisticuffs in this one. A fight that's going to happen April 20th in Brooklyn, New York at the Barclays Center. Tickets already on sale, selling very well. Thank you for joining us wherever you may be. I'm Beth Durant, alongside the editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher. Dougie, we've known these kids for a while. Yep. And I say kids because they're 25, but we knew when they were amateurs. We knew they were coming up. This is something that looked like it was going to be the collision track for a while. I didn't. I never thought there was going to be an issue making a fight like this because they both talked about wanting it. Right. But watching the way they went back and forth in New York, the way they've been going back and forth on social media, they're selling this fight. But, Doug, as a fight fan, you don't have to sell it. This is a fight I want to see. Exactly. It's guys who are in their prime. They have tremendous talent. They have um, a lot of accomplishments under their belt, especially on Haney's side. He's a former undisputed lightweight champion. He's, he has a world, world title at 140 pounds. He's like the number one rated junior welterweight. Ryan Garcia is a superstar. He hasn't won his first major world title, but listen, this guy has the following. That's something that Haney wants. And it, you, you turn the clock back 
24 years to Shane Mosley and Oscar De La Hoya, right? They fought as kids. They had that rivalry going back to before they were even teenagers. They carried that into the professional ranks. Shane Mosley was very accomplished, but he wasn't a superstar like Oscar. Oscar had something that Shane wanted. When Shane Mosley beat Oscar De La Hoya, he didn't become the face of boxing. Oscar remained the face of boxing, but Shane's stature grew. And really, by putting on a great fight at Staples Center right here in Los Angeles, they enhanced each other's legacies. And their legacies, this is a fight that, Doug, the legacy is not going to be cemented April 20th in Barclays. Uh, but this is a fight that, wow, we actually got it. They're not just talking about it, they're about it. And in it's the refreshing. last couple of years of boxing, we <laughs> yeah. haven't had that, especially the editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine. Yeah, we hear about, you know, we all dream about certain matchups happening, and there's always some re reason for it not happening. It's, well, he fights for that promoter, or he fights on that side of the street, or he fights on this platform and this network, and they can't come together, and fight fans just get frustrated. Yeah. Meanwhile, the fighters themselves go back and forth on social media, and it makes Generation Z look really bad. Well. This matchup makes Generation Z look good because yeah. both these guys are at the their physical primes, they're at the peak of their powers, and they're getting it on. And I'm not surprised that this fight was easy to be made because Devin Haney let us know a long time ago he wanted to smoke. He wanted to fight Vasily Lomachenko when he yep. was 20. And he was not ready for Vasily Lomachenko at that point, but he wanted the fight and he meant it. And when he finally got in the ring, he did enough to beat Lomachenko. Yeah. And even if you think that fight was close or controversial, but he was in the ring with He them. was in the ring with the future Hall of Famer. And that's what I want to talk about, Devin Haney, before we get to Ryan, all that good stuff. Thanks for joining us on the press conference, wherever you may be around the world. April 20th, live on The Zone at Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Tickets on sale, already selling very well. There's a pre-sale ticket uh, going on today, tomorrow, the general public. Uh, it's about the fights. It's about seeing young guys talk about it. Now, Devin Haney is a fighter. I've interviewed him a couple of times. I really like his demeanor. I know Bill, his dad, is going to be the one talking. Yeah. But when you were around Devin, you're like, this guy is all about boxing. He's you mentioned serious. the Lomachenko. Went to Australia twice and beat the champ. It, like, the rematch clause where people were wondering, well, you're taking less money. Why are you doing that? You're in charge. No, this is what I got to do. He's not running, as you say, from the smoke. Yes. I love his attitude. Yeah, I think of all of the young guns at 135 pounds and 140 pounds, I think Devin Haney is the most serious about his craft, because he gets better as a technician, fight by fight, but also about his career, about legacy. He wants to get in there with guys like Jorge Linares. Why? Jorge Linares is a three-division champion. Jorge Linares was going to give him that experience that he needed to, you know, have the confidence to travel to Australia to beat a tough guy like George Cambosos. Here he is against Jojo Diaz, another seasoned veteran who's going to take him a hard 12 rounds. He grew from these experiences. 12 rounds with Jojo Diaz, 12 rounds with Jorge Linares, 12 rounds with Yuri Ocas Gamboa. By the time he got in the ring with George Cambosos, he was ready for him. By the time he got in the ring with the future Hall of Famer and Vasily Lomachenko, he did enough to get that decision. And what I like is very next fight, he moves up in weight, he takes on the baddest guy in the 140 pound division, Regis Progre, and he shuts him out. Yeah, that was in Oakland, uh, San Francisco. Yeah. That's where they went out at home of the Warriors. Now, Devin Haney, you've been wanting the Ryan fight. You, Doug, you mentioned that, you know, he's very serious, very professional. Look, we've all seen the social media post that from Ryan yesterday where Ryan said, I'm just trolling everybody. And what did <laughs> Devin say? I'm not showing up, man. This guy's not taking it serious. Well, they're both showing up yes, today. They are. Ryan, if you know that, he's he's sending those messages with a little twinkle in his eye, like, I'm trying to get the engagement. Hey, he's a content king right. for a reason. He knows how he to knows build. He knows what he's doing. He is. Yeah. And then those tweets got deleted this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see Ryan running to Griffith Park, a la Manny Pacquiao style, where he's Good. running from Hollywood to the Hollywood side. But Ryan Garcia, love him, hate him, it doesn't matter. You got to respect them for getting in the ring. Tank Davis and now Devin Haney. Yes. He could have easily gone somewhere else and made money, but no, he's getting after Well, that's why I wasn't surprised that this fight was made so quickly and without a lot of headaches and a lot of back and forth. Both fighters have proven that they're willing to take on risky fights. They're they're willing to, to risk their undefeated records. And that's what Ryan Garcia did against Tank Davis. And he lost his O, but listen, he's still Ryan, still Ryan Garcia. He's still King Ryan. He still has that social media following. And even this back and forth between them right now at the you know with the, the customary traditional stare down, Ryan knows what he's doing. We, yeah. Even when Ryan, it seems like he's getting emotional. 
like maybe he wants to fight or shove or do something like that. That's all part of showbiz. He gets that part of the business of boxing. April 20th in New York, Brooklyn, New York to be exact. Barclays Center, you'll be able to buy tickets tomorrow to the general public tonight. And this afternoon, there's a pre-sale going on. Just go to the Golden Boy social media accounts for find out information about that. And Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. Now, we see the riches for Ryan. We see the PJs. We see him running around, him sending people money on Cash App, him doing all this stuff. He's got the money now, thanks to the Tank Davis fight, and also his social media following where he built himself as a content uh, creator. But at the end of the day, you go back and you look how Ryan started. Doug, we were there when he started fighting in the United States for the first time. Heck, we were at the Belasco Theater, yeah. Golden Boy uh, LA Fight Club, where he was showing up as a fan. Yeah. He had just started in Sherman Oaks. Remember the Bash Boxing yes. days? Yeah. He started his professional career in Mexico. Devin Haney started his professional career in Mexico. Two teenagers that weren't old enough to fight in the state of California, a 16, 17 year old fighting in Mexico. So when people want to say, oh, they have this, they have that, they've earned their millions yeah, right now. They weren't now. making money fighting in Tijuana. No, they were losing money fighting. <laughs> but my right, point about right. that is they've had to climb. You know, people say, oh, it's easy for them, but they've had to climb from where they're at, not to use the term, but out of the mud. They were getting out of it. They've earned this big They've earned their payday. stature. They've earned yeah. this where we're here at a press conference. We're all over the world where they're doing everything. But when you first saw Ryan, what'd you think? I thought there was um, physical tools there. I saw a frame that could add weight. He was fighting at like 130 at the time. Yeah. And I thought he could easily be a lightweight right now. He's got the frame to carry 140 pounds, which is he's doing right now. I think he could go up to welterweight or even to uh, junior middleweight, just like Oscar De La Hoya. Yeah, he's 25 years old. We saw him for the first time on the Bernard Hopkins Joe Smith card. Yes. At the forum. And that was Bernard's last fight. No, the press conference, Ryan showed up all in suit. He had a tuxedo. He had, he had a tuxedo. He had a deal. I think he had like a deal with the Yeah, a he had tuxedo a tuxedo deal. Company. We're like, who is this kid who's going to be fighting like at four in the afternoon? And he made us let us know. You're going to know my name. You're going to be able to. Because we've seen plenty of kids that come up with a lot of hype, especially now in this day and age. But the kid has gotten to this level. He's not a world champion, but he's knocking on that door if he stays locked in. Yeah, right? his talent has gotten him this far. He has defeated some legitimate lightweight contenders and some tough cookies like Oscar Duarte in his, his last bout. Um, he's got the talent. He's got the speed. He's got the power. I think he's he's got the heart, you know. Um, I think he just needs to focus more on his craft. He, he, you know, take a page from Devin Haney and work on that technique, work on becoming a complete fighter. You see him try different things, but one thing that his career has not had is that consistency because he has jumped from one trainer yeah. to another trainer. And they've all been great trainers. Eddie yeah. Reynoso, Hall of Famer Joe Goosen, and now Derek James, who's like a two-time yeah. trainer of the year. But each of those trainers, they have different styles. Yeah. They have um, different techniques that they want to implement. So and this will be the second one with Derek, to, yeah. Right, you know, and sometimes you wonder, are you sticking with these guys long enough to, to where they can instill the technique and the foundation that they want to instill in you. Yeah, but then at the same time, you look at his promoter, Oscar Deloya, who was very... Well, you know what? He had different trainers, well, but he was like that. a... You know, like, but he was he was, he was was elite level as an amateur. Yeah. Oscar had, uh, he's yeah. had six, seven trainers bouncing around, figuring yeah. things out, trying to yeah. know what's going on yeah. as we get Oscar his but microphone. you know what? Oscar always had his brother, Joel, in yep. the camp, and often... Robert Alcazar, who was with him as an amateur, was still around even when he had Gil Clancy or Emmanuel yeah. Stewart or the great Jesus Rivero, you know, the professor. Yeah. So or there Floyd throwing water at there. you and wake oh. up. Hey. <laughs> Oscar Floyd Deloya. Floyd Mayweather Sr., yep. he, got some, he got the right hand out of you. I remember that. He did. No. I, <laughs> are we talking about trainers? Yeah. 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 Well, we're, we're talking, talking about, about Ryan's moving trainers bounced, around. Yeah. yeah and, it's, it, it happens. It's not it a big happens. Deal. It's no big deal. It, I'm, I'm surprised he hasn't gone through four or five. <laughs> well, give him time. It's only 25. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But, um, yeah, no, I had I had like six or seven trainers. What you do is you just absorb everything yeah. from every single one, and you learn and you put it together. And, I mean, more power to him if he wants to change the, five or six times. The Golden Boy himself, the promoter for this fight, Oscar DeLoya, joining us right now. Oscar, you've talked about making the fights, how Golden Boy wants to work with everybody, yeah. wants to make the fights for sure. the fans. And Doug and I were talking about this, that both these kids said, hey, I want it, let's go. And I've heard you say many times in conversations, it was probably one of the easiest negotiations you've had. It was. It was easy. Um, you know, it's pretty cool living in Vegas. 
you know, every fighter passes through Vegas, and yep. if you if you want to call a meeting, everybody's like, Vegas, all right, I'll be there. <laughs> right. And so, you know, talking to talking to Devin, talking to to Bill, mm -hmm. we had a handshake in five minutes. Wow. I called Ryan Garcia. Hey, let's do it. Easy, it and we made it happen. It shouldn't be difficult. It wasn't difficult at all, yeah. and, and and that's that's why I admire Ryan and Devin for for putting this together. Is that they they act, these are the types of fights that make you great. Yes. These are the types of fights that um, that 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 people want to see. That yeah. people are always crying about. Yeah. You know, on Twitter well, or social media or this or that. Why doesn't it happen? Da, da, da. Well, it's here. Let's embrace it. Let's let's make it happen. Let's make it huge. And uh, I'll tell you one thing: New York was yeah. was crazy. It sure. was I've never seen anything. They're like starving. It. They're starving yeah. for big time exactly. boxing. They exactly. haven't had it in a few years. I mean, I, I can tell you that the press conference in New York was way bigger than Tank and Ryan. Yeah. Way wow. bigger. It was crazy. We heard people yelling from the crowd in, in New York, and it was very limited tickets because yeah. the venue we were at. Yeah. They were yelling at everybody. Like Heckling. everybody. Those got are New York. Those are New York but City that's fans. New York. Yeah, they're everybody vocal. can get that's it. New York. Yeah. They and they're, they're hardcore. They know their hardcore. stuff. Hardcore. Yeah. It's like if you're talking too much, get the hell out of the city. <laughs> it was cool. It was cool. Now yeah. for Ryan, uh, we mentioned that uh, 25 years old, going and getting after it. You and I, you and he had dinner. There was some beef or whatever. At the end of the day, though, Oscar, right. you said it uh, on, on Ariel's podcast where you have the blueprint for these guys. You know how you can help them in and out of the ring. Sure. How important is that for you to mend those? No, uh, look, um, we had dinner, and uh, you know we uh, we were talking just about you know how he started, his where he's at, where he can finish, and uh, I told him, look, if you ever want any advice, any fighter out there, if you want advice. Whether it's the good or the bad, I have the answers. So come to me whenever you want. You know, you can DM me, you can, uh, you know, send me a message, whatever. I'm here for you guys. And because um, you've been there, and he appreciated that. Yeah, I've been through the lows, I've been through the highs, and all, and everything in between. But it's important that these fighters understand that I'm here for them, and that's the difference with any other promoter. Is that you know, me and Hopkins have been through this right. many, many times. We've been through the, the whole family drama. We've been through the whole, you know, the fans wanting to, you to, you know, the, the pressure from the fans, sure. uh, the pressure from the fighters calling you out. Especially you, know. you. You can relate to Ryan in a way that few few former fighters can because right. you were the face of boxing. Right. You were a superstar. Right. And it's a, it's a very small percentage right. that reaches that stratosphere right. where everyone's watching everything right. they do and i have to imagine yeah. i can only imagine it's got to be tremendous right. pressure and, and well, you can you experience that sure no i we, we experienced it but there, there's there's some there's something different that me and ryan are experiencing or have experienced ryan's going through that he, he's in that elite level where he's he's a cute fighter he's a good looking fighter yeah. right not too many of us are, are, are out there. <laughs> believe me. Maybe and just waffles, maybe just waffles, two. Right? Yeah. Me and Ryan. <laughs> so it's an added pressure. It's sure. uh, it's it's it, it, it's an elite level where, yes, you're a good fighter. Yes, you train hard. Yes, you can win world titles. You can win a lot of money. Wait, but he's good looking. Right. Let me throw rocks at him because yeah. he's good looking. So the you boyfriends so want to beat you up. Triggers. The girlfriends want to beat you. It's, it's a whole sure. it's a yeah. whole different mentality. I'm yeah. telling you, I used it. To train harder, I used it to fucking kick. Sorry, to kick your ass inside yeah. the ring because yeah. you're talking shit about my my looks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this, this pretty face will beat your ass. But yeah. in, in a different world though, because yeah. you didn't have the social media, so Ryan right. has that. So he has everybody has access to him. Exactly. And we saw yesterday. He's yeah. like, look, I'm trolling you guys. I know what I'm doing right. with this right now. There's that extra pressure. He's talked about his mental health. He's talking about how he's in the, in a better space for him right now. At the end of the day, though, Oscar, if you don't take care of the ring, nobody cares about all that stuff. No. You got to perform. You have to perform. You have to perform. And, and and that's exactly what I told him inside the ring is or or in our meeting, uh, dinner meeting. You have to perform. You have yeah. to go. Out. At the end of the day, you have to win fights. You have to win world titles. And you have to excite the fans. Of they got to be good fights. Of course. And and he's a pressure fighter. He's a guy who understands. He knows how to put on a show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, Devin Haney, master boxer, yeah. master performer. Now he says he found this this power behind his punches, which will be interesting because yeah. now they're talking about, well, this fight's going to end in one round within four rounds. Okay, well, we'll see who's going who's gonna to bring it. Yeah, you got to back and that I, talk and up. If, if Haney brings it and Ryan brings it, then we're going to have a war. 
we're going to have an exciting fight. This I see it uh, where they could be they fight this time, but there could be a rematch. This could be a trilogy. This is what boxing sure. needs. Those sure. kind of rivalries. Right. Exactly. It could be a rematch. Could be a rivalry. Could be a trilogy. I mean, I think the fact that they fought six times yeah. in the amateurs. I mean, think about I fought. I, I believe I fought Mosley one time or twice. Right. I'm yeah. not really and too you sure. You guys were kids. We were kids. And I still remember his style. I still remember what he, what he's all about. So, was it personal? As a pro, though, um, knowing that you had him the, as a well, kid. Well, the fact the fact that you fought six times, yeah. I believe it is personal. I believe that that you know they both have something to prove. They have a both have a chip on their shoulder. Yeah, they, yeah, they want to make it count in the pro level. And like you said, who knows? Maybe there is a trilogy here because they're that even uh, matched up. Oscar, you seem like you have a different energy this week. Like maybe New York got to you. Algo que pasó, man. No, what's getting to me is I got a freaking molar that I got to take off tomorrow. <laughs> oh, it's, it's like nasty right now. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to hold it together. <laughs> I'm excited, but man, I'm trying to hold it together. You got right your now. fighter's face on, man. Ooh. You guys can hide pain. Man. I like that. Hey, Oscar, <laughs> hey, real, hey, yeah. real quick question. How will it change Ryan Garcia if he wins this fight? Because I was telling Beto, Ryan has something that Devin wants, which is that that superstar status. Okay. Yeah. Devin has something that Ryan wants, right. which is that respect yeah. within the boxing sure. world, within hardcore fans. Sure. He has the, you know, the undisputed championship, the world titles. Right. He's in the pound for pound top 10. Yeah. Ryan isn't. Right. If Ryan beats him, what does it say to Ryan? Does that change him in any way? You know I, what I mean? I, like I, I, make yeah. him like more secure. I think I think what it does is um it, it makes him believe that he does belong because the boxing world is is a strange world right you know we don't you were just we, a pretty we, boy even though yeah, you had a, right. an olympic gold medal exactly and even after your first world title they're like yeah they're like, wbo okay, belt he's yeah, not really, really matter right exactly once once you get the respect from the hardcore boxing fan yeah. then you're in and you're in an elite you know circle that that is going to accept you that is going to respect you and especially fighting Devin Haney, I believe that'll take him over the top and uh, it'll make him the man. I think, look, Ryan Garcia, without a world title, is now making $30 million. He's probably going to make the same with Devin Haney here. If he yeah. wins, he's probably going to double that. So wow. I, think, I, I think Ryan Garcia has the opportunity to become one of the biggest, uh, box, not only boxers, but athletes uh, on the face of this earth winning this fight. That's how much is on the line. And that'll be April 20th, Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Oscar, I know you got your tooth is bothering you. We're going to let you go. <laughs> I you got still my dentist take... right in the back, so I'm going to maybe pull it out right now. Right, well, there you go. Get <laughs> you'll Thanks, be ready guys. to go. Thank you, Oscar. <laughs> Appreciate it. And, Doug, I like what he says about this. So These guys are going after each other, but the legacy factor is really there. And, yes, a lot of pressure on Ryan because so many different factors. But the legacy factor for both these fighters, I love hearing that in 2024. Yeah, and the stakes should be high, and it should inspire them. It, it should make them want to fight hard because making the fights, getting the matchups together, that's just one part. The other part is to deliver excitement and drama for the fans. It can't all be a soap opera outside the ring. April 20th, Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. We're getting ready for Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, the final press conference. Tuesday, they were in the Big Apple. Tonight, or this afternoon, we're in Hollywood, California. The fighters will be making their way to the podium real soon. Right now, is joined by the Hall of Famer, the executioner, the the eagle fly, eagle fly. Last yeah. of the last our of the wing, great fighters. Our wings are broke right now, but we'll be all right. <laughs> the one and only B-Hop. Uh, Bernard, you've been around a lot of promotions whether it's a fighter, whether it's a promoter. How's this week been feeling? Uh, busy, um, traveling from um, East Coast to the West Coast. Um, you know, I'm used to it, but in the same time, I'm a little older now, but still, it's the energy, um, the motivation, and, you know, the press conference itself, the hearing the fighters, how they feel, and also understanding this is a big fight. And it's big for both guys. Are you feeling that from the fans? I'm feeling like it. the Not fans only. in New York. Did they give you that energy where oh, they're, yeah. they're telling oh, yeah. you we want oh, yeah. this, we want oh, to see it? Oh yeah, and the experience that I have, then I believe that people should believe me when I say that the energy is definitely there. And and also, Doug, um, this is this is a fight that it should be there because wow. let's look at it. They 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 have a, not only a, a rivalry of history, but 
they built in some animosity over the years yeah. where they're using this fight as an approach to break the tie of a 3-3 on both sides from the amateurs. So that they, they got some momentum of, of say, back in the day, beef. Yeah, I like the official tagline. This one counts. It does. As, because it does, yeah. It does. <laughs> Beautiful artwork great by our creatives, and there's a crown up there. I mean, Ryan, what he brought out in New York, we had a crown. He had the women throwing flowers. I don't even know what he's up to today. I almost tripped on one of those, <laughs> no. slid on one of those uh, pellets. Hey, yeah. that'd be but, fun. But, but it was, I've never seen nothing like it. It was great, and that's what brings, you know, a whole excitement to the fights, the things that you... Don't expect to happen, happens. Inside the Avalon in Hollywood, California, Beth Duran, Doug Fisher, and Bernard Hopkins. B-Hop, uh, before we get to the fight, at Tuesday's press conference, Ryan stood up while you were talking and said, Bernard, let's bury the beef right now. Like, he had dinner with Oscar. He said things are fine. You and him, I mean, you it was personal. You were just talking business. You were talking boxing business when you guys were going back and forth, but he buried the beef. How important is that for you? Well. To me, he buried something that wasn't um, with me. Uh, as I said, quote, we have no beef. Uh, that's his uh, way of laying out the frustrations that he laid out. And again, we can say that, you know, whispers and other influences and things. And I tell the young fighters with Golden Boy today and just told two that's here watching and witnessing um, what goes on outside the boxing ring is that um, you, you have to watch and understand the growth and development of being a superstar or being a, a, a fighter of, of interest. Where you get to that level, there's a lot of pressure. And I'm not making any excuses for Ryan. I'm just saying that whatever he, and he expressed it well, had against or beef with myself and my partner, Oscar De La Hoya, not showing up, not supporting him, uh, the world know who he was being influenced by, but mm. even not giving that the blame all the way, <laughs> we must take accountability, which I mean when I say we, I'm talking like I'm still fighting. Fighters must take accountability of their actions because they're not kids. Kids are used yeah. in, 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 in the conversation of uh, identifying a fighter because they're young. Uh, look in the dictionary, a kid is a baby <laughs> lamb. Right. They are grown men that pay taxes. And the last time I talked to my CPA, kids don't pay taxes, we pay <laughs> their taxes. So these young men have to understand they got to do men business in the ring and out of the ring, and they got to conduct themselves in the same fashion. Now that we are here, and we spent a lot of time on that, no beef, we want them to win, we support them here at Golden Boy. I support them, Doug, I support them. And I want everybody to know that we can promote them. We can talk out yeah. great. We can do all the things yeah. that we do as a promoter. And, and this is a but, different situation than but, the Tank Davis but, fight. You guys correct. actually are hands-on promoting correct. this fight. It's a Golden Boy show. Right. That, that, was different. Show. that was different with it, the Tank it, Davis it, event. It's, yeah. Correct. Exclusively, yeah. we can fight for them at the promoter table. There you go. <laughs> and Ryan needs to fight at... The ring table. Yeah, at, at, and because and listen, because of that, and kudos to Golden Boy, and kudos to Ryan, and kudos, everybody just getting kudos it to Devin Haney. Yeah. No, no catch weight, no rehydration, no rehydration no clause, no mess. second weigh in. Let's right? just go None fight. That, that way, that that means no excuses. No His excuses. Because this one counts. That could have been a tag <laughs> too. No that could have been a tag too. Yeah, no excuses. All right. Doug Fisher or came might, up with another might, slogan. We might use that on uh, the Ring Magazine cover. I love cover. that. No, no excuses. No excuses. There you go. No me excuses. Up, so, let me ask you this, though. For Ryan and Devin to get in the ring, Oscar said it was an easy negotiation. You know all about this because you've been involved in negotiations. You're like, I want this, I want this. Back and forth. It was both guys saying, yes, yes, let's go. That's you love historic that. That's itself. Oscar said it took less than 10 minutes. I believe it. Bill Haney was on board. You see what I put up on my Instagram. If you didn't go to Be Hop the Alien, you'll see it. I just gave myself a plug. <laughs> you will see it. Be Hop the Alien. <laughs> Listen, it, it, it wasn't too much to talk about yeah. other than, is Ryan ready? Yes. Is Devin Haley ready? Of course. Hell yes. Yeah, of course. And here we are. Listen, all negotiations don't happen this way. This is unusual. Don't expect it to happen in the next fight, yeah. whoever it be, on a super level. But one thing for sure, 
Golden Boy promotion set out to do what Oscar announced and Golden Boy announced, and we keeping that fire burning, and we hope it get contagious, which we see it is, and that's all we can expect going forward in 2024. I'm We're not waiting. surprised. Yeah. I'm not surprised it was easier to make. No. Like I said, both guys are in their prime. One has what the other one wants. I'm sure they both believe that they can beat the other. If you want it, it should happen. Too bad it doesn't happen like this more often in this sport. April 20th, Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, is where you can go and check out Ryan Garcia against Devin Haney. Golden Boy Promotions running the show in the Big Apple. Bernard, Oscar's been saying, if you guys want fights, you want smoke, come to Golden Boy. We got it for you. We got doors open. Everybody. The doors open. The doors open. The doors open. The, the front door. The back door is always double locked, but the front door <laughs> is always open. And you know what? We got fights, and we got fighters that want to show that they're the best, and they want to be in the best company, and that is go to boy promotion. At the end of the day, it's about giving the fight fans what they want, which is good fights. It's all about if the fans don't care, we all out of business. Yeah, it's true. It's real good, true. And the fight and the fans should demand what happens next. The winner, if 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 the fans want the winner of this fight to fight Teofimo Lopez, oh. that's what should happen. Doug, Regardless of who is the promoter. Doug, you absolutely yeah. right. I think going forward, to piggyback off what Doug just said, but in my own way, there should be a poll for the fans out there in the universe to vote who they want to see. Ryan Garcia, if he wins. Devin Haney, if he wins, huh. fight next in that weight division. And it should be like that in every weight division because you give the fans the power and the control to be able to spend their dollars and take their time and not go on vacation or whatever they got to do in their personal life and do what, Doug? Watch the fight and make the fight. They be part of ideally, the promotion. Ideally, big fights should make big fights. That's what, that's what I'm A talking about. A big fight should set up another big fight. If the fight itself is so good, Fan and close fans want to run it back. Then so, you have a so, rematch. So basically, and that's, after this that's fight happens, rivalries. after this fight happens, whatever happens, the winner shouldn't go fight a mandatory that nobody cares about. Right, right. One forty. What a division, Dougie. Yeah, that's a good loaded, yeah. loaded, and loaded. Then, and you signed some guys at one forty. Arnold Barbosa. Who I saw him walking around. I he's saw him like, right, right over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He we heard signed. you say the next, sure. and Arnold just showed up. Maybe we'll grab Arnold a little bit. I had to because. First of all, not only just the personality or the skill or the personality, uh, they thirsty. See, yeah. people said I'm, I, I'm, I'm hungry. They starving. They see it. They want, they want Ryan's attention. There's nothing wrong with that. They want, yeah. they want there's money. They want there's money there. his attention. On, there's money there. What Why young, not? what young, competitive athlete in any sport don't want to be in a position like that and, and willing to earn it and not be given it. We're all over the world on YouTube right now. The executioner, the one and only B. Wait, what's your Instagram? B Hop D L N One D <laughs> D L N. <laughs> always promoting the Hall of Famer. Always good talking to you, Bernard. Thanks so much, man. I know you got media waiting for you on the side, yes. ready to talk to you. Fans are here. It's a good setup here at the Avalon in Hollywood, California, you, waiting you for always, man. Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney to make their appearance you. here in yeah. Hollywood. As you wait for these fighters, where make sure you follow the Golden Boy social media accounts for all that good information. Pre-sale tickets are available now. So if you have the Golden Boy mailing list, they sent you an email to let you know how you can get these tickets. So you can go in tomorrow. The tickets go on sale to the general public. New York, Brooklyn, New York, April 20th. I, the first fight I ever called was at the Barclays Center. It was Zab Judah, Pali Ban Lenaji. Oh, wow. That was in, I think, 2013 or 2012, whatever it was. Ten at years the end of the day, ago, huh? I'm like, this place is awesome. It is. I've been there for basketball. Awesome. I can only imagine what it's going to be like April 20th with Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney get going. Because the East Coast, those fight fans are hardcore. That's hard what I was going to say. With like, with Malinaji and Judah, you had two Brooklyn natives, yep. different parts of Brooklyn. And obviously that excited everybody. But New York City fight fans, the oh, greater yeah. New York City area fight fans, they're so hardcore. They're so entrenched in this sport. They follow it so closely. They appreciate everybody. They oh, yeah. appreciate skills. They appreciate the savages. 
they appreciate the the superstars like like Ryan Garcia. Yeah. Even if, if if it's to hate on them, yeah. they but still they want to see them. They, and they want to see them in their hood. Yeah, but it's not just New York. You're going to be able to get people from the Philly, the that the yeah. Blue Horizon, the 2300 yeah. Club. They're coming yeah. through. You get DC. You get Atlantic yeah. City. You get Jersey. The entire Eastern Seaboard coming through. It's a train ride or a yeah. short car ride. As much as Ryan was saying Vegas is great, we've all been to Vegas. It is great. The yeah. rematch can go to Vegas, but there's something about being in New York first. It's a different energy. It, it really is. is. And you know, this you've been many fights out yes, there. Yes, it is. It is. No, and I'm, I'm, I'm not exaggerating. I'm not trying to, to pump up the fight. Yeah. There's something about, you know, a fight at Barclays Center or Madison Square yeah. Garden. Madison Square Garden has got this history going yeah, back 100 years. But Barclays Center, it's it's got the modern history. Yeah. And w people were like, well, why Barclays? Let me tell you this. I work at uh, Sports for ESPN. Well, this time of year in April, the NBA and the NHL tells teams to block out dates for playoffs, for potential playoff games. When the teams are close to being eliminated, that's when, like, okay, you can release those dates because there's a lot of multi-sport venues. Like, MSG has so many different things. Well, the Knicks are really good right now. So the Knicks are probably going to be playing a playoff game in April. If not, maybe that might have been the spot. So the Nets are not that good. So they know at the end of April they're not going to be available, and it takes a while to promote a fight, to get it done, all that good stuff. And Vegas, well, we know there's so many different things of what can happen or not happen on Cinco de Mayo weekend. Barclays is a great venue. It's a modern. It's a modern arena. Because modern you're not venue. putting Ryan and Devin in 10,000. You need yeah. 18. Yeah. Yeah, you could probably cram 20,000 in there. Probably could. Yeah. And it's just a great setup. Can't wait to be out there that week. And Golden Boy could be in all kinds of cool things for them. The activation, all that good stuff. You just saw the videos, the Golden Boy social media account posted from fight week for any fight, let alone what they did this week in New York. And the pictures of Ryan and Devin outside Barclays Center. That was cool to see because they've been great fights over the years. And it's going to be one of those epic fights that's going to happen. So April 20th. Doug, it seems like it's far away, but it's not, as we're still it'll waiting for the fighters. Yeah, it will blink, and it'll be here. That's but, how it goes. But Golden Boy is still busy. Then that's not what they're doing. they got some fights coming up. Let me give you the schedule. Mark's 16th in Vegas at the Cosmo. A great, great venue for boxing. Camarón Cepeda takes on Hughes. That's at the Chelsea Theater in Las Vegas. I Camarón love Cepeda, is man. making some noise yeah. at 135. Guys. Undefeated, lightweight contender, grinder, soul taker, pressure fighter, volume puncher, and he's got good technique on top of that. I, uh, have, I watched him live his last fight, just as a fan in commerce. So just good. take apart poor uh, Mercito Hesta. No one takes apart no. Hesta like that. Nobody. March 30th. YouTube theater in Inglewood. Like where? Okay, you know where the Rams play, the Chargers play, SoFi Stadium? There's a theater inside of that. Great setup, about 6,000 nice. people. Surdo Ramirez against Gula Median, who's That's Abel Sanchez. That's gonna be good, guy. yeah, yeah. That's he, a good one. Gula Marion bought Abel Sanchez out of retirement. Yeah. And they're working good, and that's a big step up for Zurdo, because he's used to being the bigger guy, but this cruiserweight from France is, I mean, he is big and strong and, then, and formidable. Uh, April 4th, the Golden Boy Fight Night Series that Oscar DeLoya and Eric Gomez, President of Golden Boy, created to give the younger fighters an opportunity to get some exposure during the week. Go back to our home at Fancy Springs Resort Casino in Indio, California. Tito Sanchez, who also has a management deal with Miguel Cotto, trained by Joel Diaz. This young man has been putting on some show. He's going up against veteran Eric Ruiz, who fought on the Munguia undercard in Phoenix, came out of retirement, like a three-year retirement, put on a heck of a show. Yeah, he can fight. He is tough, and do not sleep on him. That's He's a real veteran. Golden Boy Fight Night, Thursday, April 4th, and of course, April 20th, Devin Haney, uh, Ryan Garcia, the WBC Super Lightweight World Title, live from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. And a man who, from what I've been told, is going to be on that card, recently signed to Golden Boy, put on a show in his Golden Boy debut in January, now from El Monte, California, a Raider fan extraordinaire at the Palace in Actually, I'm sorry. This is the Avalon. It used to be called the Palace <laughs> back in my uh, young up to no good days. And I used to see that ceiling. When it was a different night. It was at the other night you look up there. But Arnold Barbosa doesn't know anything about that because Arnold Barbosa is running at 4 in the morning, 5 in the morning. Arnold's asleep by 8 o'clock. Arnold Barbosa Jr. joining us right now, 140-pound contender. 
Okay, I knew you were gonna be here, but are you fighting April twentieth for sure? Yeah, I'll be I'll be the co-main event. Oh, nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. You have an opponent? Uh, not yet. We're working on that right now, but uh, you never know. Someone might fall out, so we might be able to be the. Look at you! Uh, All right, right away, huh? <laughs> Somebody might fall out. You're, you're you're gonna take your jabs. Go ahead. No, I'm just saying. You know, someone might. If they're not training hard, you know, and, and tickets are the way they are. You know, give fans with the, give fans a good fight. You know now, what I mean? You signed a Golden Boy for a reason, because you said they had everybody at 140, and this is it. This is why you signed for to get. Either a Ryan or a Devin or a Jose Ramirez, whoever it is. Yeah, you know, and, and um, Oscar, you know, got to work right away. You know, um, got to work right away, man. It, it, it's, it's a blessing. You know, it's a blessing. And not only, you know, did I sign with him to get a big fight, but, you know, I signed with him because, you know, I seen the blueprint of how he's made fighters. You know, he made Ryan. He made, you know, he made, uh, you know, Floyd, like you said, and, you know, he, the way he's promoted. So that's that's another big reason why I came over here to Golden Boy. And people right now going, okay, Bethel, let's get the press conference going. Well, Ryan and Devin aren't here. So <laughs> we, I kid you not, full disclosure, we were supposed to talk to Arnold later on today. But I saw when Bernard started talking about the 140 pound division, you're there talking with your boys, mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, what? What? And then you started creeping over. So we're like, let's bring Arnold over here right now. 140 pound, whether it's Teofimo, whether it's uh, Jose, or Ryan, whoever, whoever it is. When I interviewed you after your fight in Vegas, you said everybody. You don't 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 cuss like you did that no, day, no, did, yeah, <laughs> because yeah. that was the emotion. But you really do feel like these guys deserve to be in the ring with you. Why? Well, yeah, you know, um, first of all, juices were flowing after the fight. Oh, no, no, it's you know, fine. I, I, I you had a fight debut. Yeah, it's after after fight, fight, like you're good. Year, you know after fight, mean? you're good. Um, yeah. you but know, when we put the suit on, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, um, you know, uh, to be honest, you know, I felt like I deserved to be. You know, in the ring with one of them uh, a couple of fights ago. You know, um, you know, I've, I've been, you know, ranked in the top five, you know, in a long for a long time. I'm kind of the only one in my division that hasn't had a chance at a title shot, or you know, hasn't had a chance to even opportunity. You know, so and, and you made it clear years ago that you wanted Teofimo Lopez. I oh, remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I said it for years. That, yeah. I was like, dude, I see so many flaws. My my dad's a boxing guy. Yeah. So my dad's watching boxing 24/7. If it's on TV or he's it's on stream, he's finding he's watching everything. He's watching everything. He's our number one fan. He, yeah, yeah, you know, he's watching <laughs> everything, you know what I mean? So so um so he, you know, he we study it together and, and you know, we said, bro, it's not, it's not nothing special, you know, nothing crazy. Cuz when you were with Top Rank, you were saying, I want Teofimo. I want this and Teofimo will fight somebody else and like you're not a trash talker on social media. Yeah. You were just saying the facts like, yo, I'm right here. So why did that never happen? Well, you know, to you know, we, we did try to get the fight about three, four times. He just didn't want to take the fight uh, for whatever reason that is. I'm not saying he's scared of me. I'm not saying none of that. But you know, business. business. I don't know what it was. You know, um, you know, I think our paths crossed a lot, and he just didn't take the fight. You know, nothing, I had control over. It. Bob didn't have control over it. Um, you know, and then you know, it's kind of we got to the point where you know nothing you can do for me now. So I gotta you know head somewhere else. Let me ask you. You're saying your dad likes to study fights and break down fights, and you watch them with him. Beto and I have been talking, you know, and with, with Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins about the business side of this fight, it coming together and its significance. What about what happens in the ring? How do you see this fight playing out style-wise? How do you see their styles meshing? Um, you know, I, I think, you know, I think Devin Haney is the most talented of champions. You know, um, I see Devin Haney edging it. Um, it, and it depends as well. You know, it depends if you know if, if if Ryan comes to fight. You know what I mean? If he trains and he's 100, percent then then you know I think Ryan gives him a good fight. You know what I mean? I think it's gonna be a good fight because Ryan, you know, has power. He has speed. You know what I mean? He has talent. You know what I mean? But if he has to come trained and ready to go, no excuses. You know what I mean? If he loses, yeah, you don't want to hear excuses. You know what I mean? So I, if he comes fight uh, ready uh, to fight, then I think he'll be a big good fight. As a fight fan, right? Mm -hmm. You know the sport. You know what's going on. Forget, forget you, the fighter. Just you, the fan. It's pretty cool to see that they're actually doing it because too many guys you know at the business side you know they don't want to do it but for them to actually say yeah they signed the contract no bs back and forth let's just get it that's good to see yeah no no and you know hats off to them you know they're they're, they're doing a big a, a good thing for for boxing you know it's like it's like you know like like people say oh well it's not you fighting it doesn't matter you know what i mean because at the end of the day it's bringing it's a good for the sport you yeah, know and right. i'm in the, I'm, this is this is this is I'm, I'm in the sport you know what i mean so you want it to be day, healthy yeah at the end of the day it benefits all of us you know yeah. what i mean so so, man, hats off to them. You know, hopefully, you know, they, uh, like I said, hopefully they give the fight fans a really good fight. You know, that's, that's what I'm uh, expecting to see. And it stirs the pot in your weight class, which is a great thing. Yeah, because the, the, the weight class is hot right now. It is. I mean, that's deep. Division. Give me that weight. Give me the names at 140, Doug. Okay. We got so Ryan and Devin. Ryan and, and Devin. The rest we got of the guys. Arnold. We got um, uh, Jose Ramirez, who just signed with Golden Boy. The IBF champ. 
uh, from once beaten, but I think he's won all by stoppage. Subriel Matias, Matias from uh, Puerto Rico, who uh, just recently grinder. signed with Matchroom, yeah. so that's possible. Yeah, because everybody said nobody talks about Matias because he trains right. with uh, Jay Pahar Panda. Yeah, yeah. So he, I, yeah. does he spar with William Zapata? Because yeah, I, I would they pay, work out. I with, would pay to see that. To yeah. be quite honest, they work out with Camarón. Yeah, yeah. And then of course you know you have the Ring Magazine WBO champ Teofimo Lopez. So you know, and a, a lot of these guys. That are fighting at 135, like Tank Davis or Shakur Stevenson, they could come up to 140. Yeah, anytime. Easy. Yeah, so I know Shakur has been tweeting up a bunch of st stuff from like back and forth. And Shakur's a champ. He he can do whatever. When you wear that belt, you can do whatever you want. Maybe a Shakur fight for you? Man, I, I told I told I told my dad, dude, I would love to fight him. Like I, I I'm not scared of nobody. Like I'm not I didn't I'm not boxing to be scared of somebody. Like. And I've, I've made that clear with Golden Boy. I told him, like, like, dude, bring Ramirez or bring whoever, like, you know, it doesn't matter to me. So if Shakur wants to come up and fight on this card or, hey, I'm coming, man, let's do it. You know, I got my opponent yet, so we can lock something in. It's good to hear because a lot of times when it comes to technicians like uh, Shakur Stevenson or uh, Devin Haney, a lot of guys don't want to fight him. Yeah. Because, like, they'll, they'll take punishment in the ring, but they don't want to get embarrassed. They don't want to get shut out. Like, Poor Regis program. I mean, that's yeah. that's got to be excruciating, right? Yeah, so a yeah. lot of folks. I like Regis. Will, I like Regis' style too. Yeah, yeah. I, I love Regis, you know. But I'm saying, like, most guys want to avoid that situation that Regis suffered against uh, uh, an ace technician like Devin Haney. They stay away from the slick guys. Yeah. But you're saying you want that smoke too? Do anything, like, like you know, because I can do, I can box, I can brawl. You know, what yeah. I mean, like, I, I, I came, I came up boxing. You yeah. know, but I recently just kind of stayed in there a little bit more. After this Salcedo fight, kind of liked it a little bit, you know. But, but you know, I can I can go back, you know. And like I said, for April 20th, you know, I'm the co-main. Whether it's whoever I'm fighting, I'm I'm, I'm put on a great show performance. All right, Golden Boy's been taking care of you. They put you out there. You're gonna be the go the co-main yeah. in New York. Uh, you've been saying for a while, like, dude, this is my backyard. This is cool. How they been treating you? Oh man, amazing man. It was like. Like right off the bat, like you know, when once we once we signed, it was like, okay, boom, here we're going doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this, and then to me that was like music to my ears. I'm like, man, 28 and 0, like to be getting treated like it, you know what I mean? And, and now 29 and 0, like man, they've been nothing but nothing but great and amazing. Arnold Barbosa, what's your social media, man? Uh, man, follow me on Instagram at Arnold underscore Barbosa underscore Junior, and on Twitter at Junior Barbosa Arnold. And if you want to buy a house because he's flipping houses, <laughs> <laughs> am I wrong? No, no, hey, let me know. Let me know. He's a real estate man yeah, yeah. out there in Southern California, yeah, man. Let well, me know, yeah. well, good luck to you. We'll see you in all the promotions April 20th. Arnold Barbosa Jr. And uh, go ahead. Go Raiders. Raiders. Let's go. <laughs> he's all happy because about Antonio Pierce. Tony Pierce is a, a boxing yeah, fan. I'm yes, going to connect sir. to you guys. Yes, sir, this guy. one counts. April 20th, Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, Arnold Barbosa will be the co-main in Brooklyn, New York. So a lot on the line for Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. I know you're saying, hurry it up, hurry it up. I'm right there with you. Ryan, Devin, let's go. Show up already. <laughs> we started at 1 o'clock, the press conference. Uh, they're uh, fashionably late here in Hollywood, California. But you're Hollywood. You know, we're in L.A. There's traffic, even though their hotel's right next door. But the Durant, alongside the editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, Doug Fisher, joined now by... Yocasta Valle, pura vida, when you interview <laughs> Yoka from Costa Rica. And uh, Mario, you're going to translate over yeah, there? Yeah. Okay, because I can't hear you all the way. Uh, so, Yocasta Valle will be fighting Ceniza Estrada finally. Yes. How do you feel? I'm ready for the fight. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, she'll Lisa. be fighting Ceniza in Arizona on the undercard of Oscar Valdez. It's been brewing for a while. You got the fight. Um, when they told you, here's your contract, what do you think? ¿Qué pensaste cuando te dieron el contrato? ¿Qué pensó cuando te dieron el contrato? No, este, feliz, este, para hacer historia, definitivamente por el boxeo, estoy a un paso de convertirme en campeona absoluta y qué más que motivada. She's, uh, she was very happy uh, because it's history in the making. Uh, she's only uh, one step to become undisputed uh, on the 105, the female that nobody has done it. Now, how long have you wanted this showdown with Sinise Estrada? Is it years in the making? Hace ya muchos años. Entonces, más que emocionada, una pelea que la gente también quiere ver campeona versus campeona. Yeah, uh, we received the first offer in, in the 2019, so it's been some years on the making, and uh, I know now is the time. It's uh, champion against champion, uh, so she's very excited about it. Yeah, this is for undisputed. I mean, you're, you know. 
You're from Costa Rica. I know also Nicaraguan roots. There's a boxing history with Nicaragua, not so much with Costa Rica. What would it mean to be an undisputed champion from, from Costa Rica if you were to win this fight? No, significaría muchísimo, ¿verdad? Hacer historia por Costa Rica, por Nicaragua, Centroamérica y lo bonito es motivando a las futuras generaciones. Yeah, it, it will be history in, the, yeah, history in the making for Costa Rica, Nicaragua and Central America, the Latin people uh, that uh, giving a message that yes, you can. What do you think about Ryan and Devin? No, una gran pelea eh, que, bueno, tanto Heini como Brian tiene lo suyo, pero Brian García tiene su pega, entonces yo este, voy con Brian García. They're both amazing fighters, they both have the, their own uh, craft, but uh, I'm going with Ryan because uh, he has the heavy handers in this one. Yo, Costa Valle, we'll see you. When are you fighting? March? March 29. 29. March 29, <laughs> a <laughs> Friday night on ESPN against Sinise Estrada. Good luck to you. We've been happy for you. We've been following your career and pura vida. Pura vida y vamos con todo. Yo, Costa Valle, the champ putting her belts on the line against Sinise Estrada, finally getting the fight to be done. From the palace, actually, I keep saying the palace. The, <laughs> this is from the Avalon in Hollywood, California. The reason I say the palace, it used to be called the palace. It was a nightclub, still is a nightclub. Yep. So we're standing right now. This is where I used to come uh, shake, shake it back in the oh, late 90s. Wow. I'm not going to say I spent <laughs> New Year's Eve 1998 here, but I spent New Year's Eve 1998. They used to have the flashback of the Cure Band. I, I saw a Smith's wow. cover band here back when it was... Uh, the palace, so Beth the Rand, Doug Fisher, and you. And I know you're saying, where's Ryan? I want to know too, because Ryan sent a tweet that said, you do not want to miss LA. If you thought New York was crazy, okay. you don't want to miss LA. So I don't know what he has yeah, up his sleeve. Yeah, maybe he's getting his entrance together. They're like choreographing something, I don't know, dancers or yeah. an elaborate costume maybe. I so don't know. I was looking around, you know, poking around. I got sources right here, and it is sold out here. Oh, look at and that. it was free. Big balcony, uh, fans are outside. Those are the fans that couldn't get in. So there's fans outside waiting for the fighters to show up. And the reason that we're stalling, and professional fail, by the yeah. way, great job by you, is because Thank you. we don't know where these fighters are at. So we were told they're going to be here and they're going to make a spectacular entrance. <laughs> Look, our, those are me members of the media. They're outside <laughs> waiting. And I poked around, Doug. I was asking people, like, hey, what do you know? And nobody was revealing anything. This is from Team Ryan. <laughs> and they're like, you're just going to have to see. Oh, okay. I, I, I even got that uh, that line of, oh, it's going to be a movie. It's got to be a surprise. It's, uh, it's got to be a surprise. So Ryan did go running this morning, if you follow his Twitter. He did the Banny Pacquiao run from Hollywood up to the Griffith Park Observatory. So he put in that work. And we all saw Ryan's uh, social media yesterday. He put up all kinds of crazy things. And this morning comes out and says, you know, I was just trolling. 99% of what I do on social media is trolling for the engagement and the content. It works. It, we did, People but, are engaged. They're talking got, about it. They They're making Devin YouTube Haney videos say, about it. But Devin Haney was like, look, this guy's messing around. I'm not even showing up. So Devin is showing up. Yeah, he's here. I've been told right? he to show up. Uh, Ryan's showing up. I've been told he's showing up. Yeah. Uh, Editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine and you. Uh, what time is it anyways? What time is it, people? I don't have my... I'm not to look through here. I can't pay attention. It's 1.50. Yeah. We've been talking for 50 Woo! minutes. All right. Wow. Okay. Do we <laughs> so get you paid double? So you want to be a broadcaster. <laughs> so people always ask me, how do you know so much? Because you do the research, you prepare, you prepare, you prepare. Let me just say this. Luis in the truck, I'm out of notes. I don't know what else to talk about right now. But Brian Garcia and Devin Haney, they're getting after it. Tickets on sale to the general public tomorrow. There's a pre-sale going on right now and anytime there's like people moving around i'm thinking okay is this going to happen the commotion uh they will be talking uh oscar deloya and uh the, our host today is going to be mario lopez so if mario lopez wants to come talk to us and yeah. promote so, like, his uh yeah. three knockdown but rule I, or his micheladas or something we'll take <laughs> it all right but now, i think w once we see him on the stage it's go time but yeah we don't see him on the stage though Whew. but doug now in all seriousness here this division it is loaded it is stacked and it's fun and it to see. it always has been, too. Yeah, but it's, it's guys a, weren't fighting yeah. each other. Yeah, recently. And yeah. now they are. And it starts here. It could be the trickle-down effect of, like, look, we fought here, but if you don't want to, I have options somewhere else. Not like there's, like, a clear-cut, like, 
That is the boogeyman of the division. We don't have the Bud Crawford in the division, right? No. At least not somebody of, of Bud Crawford's ability. I mean, a lot of hardcore fans say that 140 pounders want to swerve the, the Puerto Rican guy, the IBF champ, M Matias. Uh, Subriel Matias, because yeah. he's a grinder. He's tough, and he just comes at you and comes at you. You know, it's a Michael Myers type. Um, but he just but I, match I him, so it makes this, it easier. That's true. But and, and I think this division has enough talent to where if these guys do fight each other, you're going to have a lot of competitive matchups. You're not going to have a lot of blowouts. Um, I mean, going into this fight, I look at Devin Haney as the guy with the momentum. I look at him as the favorite. He's the technician. He's the guy with the skills. You know, he's the guy who's absolutely dedicated to his craft and has, you know, he's clearly focused on his career. But Ryan's dangerous. You know, it's not like Ryan is, is, is going to be in over his head because of his speed and that power. He's going to be live as long as as long as Ryan is focused for the fight. And that's the thing. He's will he be focused for his fight? Uh, I know he does great work. He always shows up in great shape. His trainer Sip always says, "Stop playing." So you got to go stop playing. Somebody stop playing and bring me the fighters to the podium because we want to get this press conference going. I love talking to you, Doug. No offense, <laughs> but I mean, we, we, this is a podcast already. Yeah. I mean, we might start talking about your comic book well, collection. Well, yeah, I know. Like, give us a desk and some chairs, man. <laughs> oh man. So. The Golden Boy Promotions, putting it on. Uh, I should have known that Haney tweeted yesterday, see you at 2 o'clock. I should have known. Oh, did he say that? Yeah. Shoot. I was just thinking that he didn't know the time difference of what's going on because they're coming from New mm. York. But he did go work out yesterday at Wildcard. Oh. So he went straight to Freddy's gym, mocked Ryan by saying this is the Ryan Garcia uh, jump rope challenge. But oh, okay. That, he, I saw that. I yeah. saw some clips of but that. Haney... The kid works. Yeah. The kid is about boxing. He's, uh, you could argue that Ryan Garcia, Teofimo Lopez, Tank Davis, Shakur Stevenson, you could make a good argument that those guys have better natural talent than Devin Haney. But Devin Haney is the guy of that group of young guns. He has his head screwed on the tightest. He's the guy who's the most serious about learning boxing, being the best that he can be um, and being focused on building his career. And I think that's his edge. Woo. So I just got told that a few minutes from now, they should be arriving. Okay. Um, so we know just as much as you. And as, look, full transparency, we were supposed to talk for 10 minutes and then it was get going about 110, <laughs> 115. So the, we're completely flying by the seat of our fans right now. Shout out to all the boxing media right now that's like, man, bet those tap dancing. Let me tell you something. I never taken a tap dancing class in my <laughs> life, but ooh wee, I know how to. I'm boogieing right now, but it's fun though because we're talking boxing, we're figuring things out. We need a screen with like uh, Twitter comments yeah. and stuff. Oh, we yeah. Could, we could be interactive. And if you're a Golden Boy fighter in the building, just get over here. We're going to interview every <laughs> single one of them. If you're a retired <laughs> fighter, <laughs> we will talk to everybody right now. And I'm actually just grabbing a couple. Hold on. Get, get that guy. Get that guy over here. Hold up. Johnny Canyons, get over here. Johnny Canyons, stay, there you go. All right, yeah. there it is. I just found two guys walking by. Get over there, Jorge. Get over there, Johnny Canyons. All right. So, the, oh, where are you going? Just, right here. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I literally oh, just grabbed these. Down. These guys were walking by. Johnny Canyons, Jorge Perez. Uh, hey, Jorge Chavez. Chavez, there you go. <laughs> I'm over here thinking Mato Mero Paez. <laughs> I'm running out of names. I've been talking for 55 minutes. Jorge Chavez and Nino Dorado, appreciate you joining us right now. Johnny Cañas joining us right now. Golden Boy Prospects. We're talking about that Golden Boy fight night that we have in Indio, California. These young men have been on there putting on shows. So Johnny Cañas, uh, hold that microphone up, my man. SOA Boxing, Hector Lopez training you. What is your record now, Johnny? My record is 3-0 and with two knockouts now. When was your last fight? Uh, January 27th, so like three weeks ago. How long did that fight last? Uh, I think about 56 seconds in the first round. Yeah. Johnny Cañas, I like that. And I'll give the mic to your partner over here, Jorge Chavez. What's hola, your record hola. now? What's your record now? Uh, it's 10 and 0, 7 KOs so far. What was your last fight? Uh, last fight was February 15, and it was a six round fight. Very tough guy. Um, it lasted more than I thought. <laughs> All right, so you fought my favorite fighter ever. Yep. And I told you, yep. I was like, he fought Duel Ogin. Oh, that's the man. <laughs> he's fought everybody. The guy who's fought, fought everybody. He's fought every Golden yeah. Boy undefeated prospect, and you look good at that fight. Congratulations oh, to you, you, man. That was a, a tougher fight, but and it was also last minute, and the guy 
put made it, but you made it look easy for you. Congratulations yeah. to you, man. Three different opponents. Got that one last minute. Well, so. he's that guy. He will always <laughs> take the fight. He doesn't say no. No. Nope. So, what weight class were you? Uh, 122. 122. Mm -hmm. And what weight class were you? 135. 135. 135. Yeah. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. What do you see happening? Uh, well, you know, I'm gonna go with the Golden Boy fighter, Ryan Garcia. But uh, I mean, Devin Haney has a good chance. He's a great boxer, high IQ. But the, uh, Ryan Garcia has the puncher's chance. So. We will see. And hey, Johnny, for you, you're in the same weight class around there, yeah. 135, about the same size. Yeah, well, about the same. You height. actually look like yeah. Ryan when we met him. When Ryan, was, no, I, I kid you yeah. not. This is what Ryan looked like when he was yeah, 20 years that's old. That's true. When, when Ryan came out to the LA Fight Club, yeah. he was like 4 and 0, 5 and 0. Yeah. So how do you see this fight? Um, honestly, I think it's gonna be a good fight. You know, they fought three times or six times in the amateurs, yeah. three and three. Um, it's gonna be an interesting fight. I think um, Devin Haney's more of a boxer, so I think this will be more of a boxing chess match. So I think uh, this will be an interesting fight. I think there's going to be speed and a lot of uh, boxing IQ in this fight. So uh, it's going to be a tough one, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. You got a fight coming up, Johnny? I do got a fight coming up, uh, March 30. March 30th? I'm active. I'm staying busy. That's the best thing a fighter that's, can that's do. That's the most important like thing right there. YouTube theater. Jorge, for you? Uh, April 20th on... Oh, so we know two <laughs> Good. fighters. Go. Okay. Yeah. Good for you. You ever been to New York? Nope. Give that microphone. Hell yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna be out in New York. I mean, it's gonna be a you know two bird for one. So good for you. So April twentieth, you will see Jorge Chavez. I really like this young man, his right. style. Congratulations, get it on there. Thank you. See Were you, you guys supposed soon, to tell man. us? Huh? Were you supposed to tell us? Uh, no. I don't care. But uh, <laughs> hey, you guys heard it here first. So <laughs> That's right. let's go. Hey, we're, we're gonna make it wait an hour. Man. You can tell us there whatever you, you want. Right. Well, congratulations right. to you, you, man. Thank Jorge, you guys. what's your social media? Man, so people follow uh, you. Follow me on Instagram at official Chavez six one nine. Johnny? You can follow me on Instagram at SugarCaneBoxing. All right. Good luck to you guys. Thanks for coming by, stopping by, helping us Thank out here Beto. on the broadcast. April 20th, you'll see Jorge. March Tune in, everybody. 30th, you'll March see SugarCane, right? Inglewood, Inglewood. Inglewood. Yeah. Yeah. YouTube Theater. Thank you guys Good so much. Appreciate you guys. We don't know. You don't know. We appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> Moments away from Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, I've been told the entrances are going to be happening in a few moments so every single golden boy fighter was invited it was just more hey come check out the press conference see what's going on don't worry you don't have to dress up there's no interviews nobody's gonna be talking oh au contraire <laughs> things are completely different joined now by golden boy fighter alexis rocha 147 pounder. Lex, good to see you, man. What's up, guys? Good to see you guys, too. Now, you know these two, Jorge and Johnny. They're yeah. like the little brothers to you because they're yeah. at the gym with you. I know those two knuckleheads. Exactly, yeah. knuckleheads. Yeah. But de cariño, right? Yeah, you yeah. love those guys. Yeah, of course. For Jorge telling us he's going to fight on the card, yeah. well, that's pretty cool for him. What kind of advice do you have for him? I mean, just stay active. I think that's the most important thing as a young fighter like him. He got a six round United decision not too long ago. So, you know, get back right in the drawing board. He's back in the gym, you know gotta stay active as a young fighter. Lex, one thing, I, I, we've known you since your professional debut when it was, uh, we were in Vegas. You, you two were commenting on my fights. Yeah, yeah. We, you both you guys from yeah. the Velasco Theater. Yeah, we were outside uh, Amir Khan Canelo when it was raining yeah. in Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah, like the court area. In the court right area. In front of the T-Mobile. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. now you've gone up to big steps. I remember that. Yeah, yeah I remember. Your last fight did not go the way you wanted. Yeah. It's Giovanni Santillan. You're a pro's pro. You show up and you've been very open about it. Like, hey, I lost, but hey, yeah. let's get back to the drawing board. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, in this sport, you know, when you're in that level, if you make any little error, it's gonna you're gonna pay the price, and that's what I did. It wasn't my night, but I'm gonna hold my head up high, learn from it, and move forward. Now, the reason I ask that is because you knew you know Giovanni because you would yeah. spar him. Yeah. Ryan and Devin know each other, mind you, from the amateurs. Yeah, yeah. But you were also a standout amateur. When you know somebody from the amateur, you see him as a pro. Like it changes because yeah. you're grown men. It's different. But yeah. is that still in the back of your head a little bit? Yeah, I mean, with me and Giovanni, yeah, we sparred m multiple rounds. I don't know what the, the case with them. They probably just saw each other a lot. I was actually in the Team USA with Devin. We actually oh, traveled. We actually traveled to Ukraine, to Italy. Really? Yeah, both times. Um, this was, was he always kind of like that chosen one, where people always whispering like, "This guy's real special," and yeah, watch he, this guy. He had that little slick boxer to him, mm -hmm. but he wasn't. This is back when we were 15, 16 oh, okay. years old, so it wasn't like it, it stand out like it does now. Yeah. Okay. But now he's he's the real deal. Let me ask, so you would go to Ukraine and Italy, Team USA. Yes. You're scared out of your mind because you're leaving the United States for the first yeah, time. 15-year-olds, And they're yeah. putting you against grown men out there. Yeah, well, it wasn't necessarily grown men. It was 15, 16, yeah, the gym division. Yeah, they say they're they 15. Lie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't but know what's stuff out did there. Did you know that Devin would become Devin Haney? I, I didn't. 
No. The only one that really stood out to me was Shakur Stevenson. Okay. That nice. was the one that really stood out to me. Devin, Nikki was like everyone at that level is good. We're ranked number one for a reason. Yeah. Everyone has good skills and their attributes and whatever they do. But Devin creeped out of since when he turned pro in TJ, then he started coming to the U.S. and he made a name for himself. Devin was a guy I was hearing about, not from his what he did as an amateur boxer, but what, what he was doing in the gyms in Las Vegas. I remember Sean and Kenny Porter yeah. introducing me to him when he was like 14, 15 years old. Zab Judah, who might be his godfather somehow yeah. related, yeah, yeah. was raving about the kid when he was a kid, mm. you know? And so well, I was hearing good. about him from established pros, you know, folks that were, you know, in the in the boxing industry now. Yeah. I didn't really hear a lot about his amateur background. No. Oh, here, hold on, Lex. I know you had some crazy entrances. Yeah. Okay, Ryan Garcia uh, is uh, approaching. No, uh, horse? Yeah. Um, okay, so Ryan Garcia is outside of the Avalon Theater. Outside is of the he horse. on a horse? He's and outside. he's telling people to move. He's in all white. Lex? That okay. Is, <laughs> that that's an entrance. That better be That's a showbiz horse. I know he's from Victorville. They got some horses in that area out yeah. there. Talk about being fashionably late. Uh, yeah, now, but you know, this is the, there's horsepower, Lex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible jokes. Terrible jokes. There All right, Lex, go. appreciate it, man. Thanks no, thank, so much. Thank you we'll guys. see you back in the ring real yes, soon. Sir. Thank you. The always classy professional, Alexis Rocha. Good to catch up with him. I don't think Lex is ever going to show up in a horse. He will show up in a Ferrari, though. Um, Doug? So all white on a white horse. We've seen some entrances. Shout out Prince Nassim. Uh, look, it looks, looks like he's getting off it. Okay, but then he has circus performers in front of him. I should have known. I saw those ladies outside. I should have known they weren't boxing fans. <laughs> the ladies in white? Well, you see the hula hoops. Oh, they're going to be. Okay. Oh, now I see them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're going to do. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They're, they're, there's choreography involved. There is. Um, I mean. When did Ryan learn how to ride a horse? Because you got probably just now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Rumble. he's got women with hula hoops. Rumble. Okay, dancers. Rumble. Um, all our Rumble. boxing media. Yeah, let, let's everybody hope the fans with the camera. And the, and the boxing media don't freak out the horse. Let's okay. let's get him here. How is he gonna get? I did not know this was happening. I'm not pretending to be I shocked. I just want to see if they let the horse inside the. Uh, the club. Oh, he's not on a horse. What is he on? What is he? He's, he's on, on somebody's shoulders. shoulders. But I had seen a horse earlier. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, lied. okay. Optical illusions here. So, so he's on somebody's shoulders? All right, whatever. He's At least he's making his way. At least he's here. Yeah. Get inside the club and get on the stage. Okay. So he wasn't on a horse. No, no, I think he was on a horse. I saw a horse earlier. He just got off of it. Well, you know, I go to the track. I go to Santa Anita. <laughs> Let me tell you this. I'm not going to bet Ryan on six furlongs right now. I might put him in exact the box, but I'm not. <laughs> Whatever it is, he's here. Yes. <laughs> Luis in the truck. You're a great producer. I love you, Luis. Look, Gonzalez, you do a great job. Um, Luis is one of the most detailed producers I've ever worked with in the business. And tonight, he is earning every single right. dollar. Shout out to you and everybody in the truck right there. Great job getting us uh, because this has been smooth for us. Yeah. For you, the fight fan that's watching, Ryan Garcia is inside the building. <sighs> Kid's got a, a flair for the dramatic, doesn't he? That's an entrance. Yeah. Uh, carried in on somebody's shoulders. I like it. I I'm, like I'm it. into the drama. Uh, I, don't I like punctuality as well. Yes. I like being professional and showing up on time. Now I know this is like when the East Coast uh, fight fans are complaining about West Coast exactly. start times. I don't know how this they do it. it. That's why they're the real fight fans. So Ryan shows up with some flair. <laughs> and everybody's walking by giving me a look like, what? DeAndre, did he have a horse? There was a horse outside. I saw a horse. Okay. A white horse, right? Okay, good. I'm but not then they carried him in. Okay. So, so clarification, Ryan was on a white horse. Mm -hmm. He was on a white horse and he got carried into the Avalon Theater. So the horse is not inside the building. Darn. Ah, oh, Mr. Ed would have been would, so happy. Yes, I mean, that would have been, that would have been a spectacle. <laughs> and but I will, I will forgive, I'm supposed to be I'll forgive Ryan for all of this drama as long as there's drama in the ring on April 20. Oh, we're gonna get some drama. I April want drama in the ring. And we're gonna get some drama 
in a few moments here on the stage at the Avalon Theater in Hollywood, California. Thanks to everybody watching us all over the world on the Golden Boy YouTube page on The Zone. This fight will be on The Zone uh, April 20th from the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. All right, I think we've interviewed every single person here, right? We're good? Anybody, anybody else that's left the interview, Doug? <laughs> <laughs> let me let me do a quick scan. <laughs> Where's where's Ellie Secback? <laughs> Ellie! Yeah, shout out to all the boxing media that here, also Fino Absolutely. Boxing, TKO, all, everybody that showed up. We appreciate them as always. All right. On the serious note, Doug, what are you gonna see here? Like these two, they don't really like each other. Like they know how to be professional. Yeah. Okay, Jane Mercia, our Golden Boy PR czar, is moving to the stage, so I think we're getting closer to it. That's great to see. I think they're gonna needle each other. Yeah. I think they're gonna toss some barbs. They're gonna try to get under the other's skin. Yeah, you and know, and it'll be it'll be like passive aggressive. Do we see a shove? I don't think they get up and shove. Nah, I, I, if we see a shove, I think it it won't be uh, it won't be genuine. Really? But I think the passive aggressive stuff, the you know, saying stuff about each other's past, poking at each other, you well, know. Well, I mean, we saw Bill Haney and, yeah. and Henry Garcia sure. going back and forth. Yeah. Well, they were going back to the amateur days. It seemed, but that seemed good natured, though, to well, me. I mean, he was accusing Henry of stuff from the amateur days. Yeah. That's uh, why he was a judge. And a I referee. heard that from everybody, though. <laughs> Uh, Everybody in the, the 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 local amateur scene was mad that Ryan's parents were uh, officials. Well, they don't have they can't do anything about that now. They're nope. professionals. We'll see it's them the past. April twenty. Beth Durant, Doug Fisher, um, going delusional as we're getting ready for <laughs> <laughs> an hour of actually no fifty minutes was good. Uh, a professional feel and it's getting quiet now. So we're having the little okay. period. Now nah, we There's don't need hush. no water. We're good. We need a cocktail. <laughs> good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get started in a couple of minutes. If you can all please take your all right. seats. Jane Murcia, Golden Thank Boy you. PR czar. You saw her getting between Ryan and Devin saying that we're going to start in a few minutes. When Jane speaks, you listen. Jane says. Jane says. There you go. I'm running out of music here. Yeah. <laughs> Jane's addiction. Yep. Hey. Yeah. Now, Doug, Great. seriously, here, yes. let, me, let me focus here. Okay. What can this fight do for Ryan's career? Because people always... Him take that needle out. He has to win. And if he doesn't win, he has to give a, a sincere, genuine effort and really make it competitive. If he can do that, but obviously he wants to win. Um, if he can do that and look good and really deliver some, some drama inside the ring, he gets instant respect. Because, can he win? Yes. I think he can knock Devin out. Really? Yeah. He has to land. Easier said than done. Of course. I'm not saying that's my official pick. Yeah, I'm just course. saying it's conceivable that he can clip Devin, not because he can punch, but because he's fast. He's very fast. And, and he's got that fast hook where he can, you know, it, it, it can serve as a counter punch. And Devin not known for the power. Yeah. Can he win? I think Devin can, can hurt Ryan. He just has really? to land cleanly. I think he's, he's sitting down more on his punches. I think he's, he's healthier and stronger weighing in at 140 than when he weighed in at 135. He was able to hurt Regis Progray. He was able to drop Regis Progray. That says something. Yeah, he's not a knockout artist, no, but I think he can get. He has authority on his punches now, more, more so than when he was an undisputed lightweight champ. Yeah, it's April 20th, so it's still a little too soon to try to figure out what prediction you're going to have. I actually haven't even seen any odds that are pretty good for the fight as people are trying to well, one make sure that we still get the fight right because Brian going back and forth saying it's gonna be moved here all that other stuff the fight's happening it, it'll happen. but the conversation that's been going on you go back and forth Devin's the favorite in this fight yes and he should be he okay. should be he's got the momentum he's got um, the the better quality victories on his resume and like I said he's got his head screwed on straight he's focused he's a very uh, serious professional boxer and, and, and which is not to say that Ryan isn't serious about boxing but Ryan's energies and focus are, are are other places outside of the gym and outside of outside of the boxing realm all right Devin Haney they're moving people away from us Devin Haney is gonna be making his entrance right in front of where we're, at. we're starting to see security moving people away so uh, that's a good sign so I'm giving you security updates here as uh, Devin Haney looks like he's going to be making his approach. So they're not going to be coming up from the podium. They're going to be coming up from the sides, like if there are wrestlers coming in through the crowd. So Devin's going to be That's cool. uh, coming in from yeah. the side where we're at. Ryan will be on the opposite side. <laughs> I'm looking through the lights on that other side, Doug. There's a lot of commotion going on there. Really? <laughs> yeah, you can't see because of the I lights. I can't see because the lights directly in my eye. There, I, 
the, the entertainers are going on. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so the entertainers are moving. There's, I see the hula hoops. There's just a lot of stuff. And you can see on the other side where Ryan is going to be entering. Yeah. Ryan looks like he's going to have about... There, oh, I see a big crown over there. Okay. And yeah, there's nothing but women crown, yeah. on that side. Oscar DeLoya. So Oscar... Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your patience. We're uh, five minutes away. Both fighters just got here, so we're five minutes away. Thank you, guys. All right, so Oscar's saying we're five minutes away. And I'm looking on the side where Ryan is going to be entering. There is somebody with a crown. Yeah. Uh, and there's about 10 models on that side. So the entrance on Ryan's side is getting crazy. The entrance on Devin's side is completely empty. So there is... Okay, now we got people over... Okay, Devin Haney is in the building. You see Devin up uh, in the balcony. So you can see Devin's got his sunglasses on. He's got the chains. He looks like he's got a flak jacket on. So, oh, yeah, I see him, yeah. yeah so oh, he's got the ice on. Man, he's glittering. Yeah, we can see his chain from here. Yeah. There's all kinds of stuff going on. So, all right. Well, they're in <laughs> position. Yeah, so Devin will That's be. That's a good sign. All right, so everything that I was told about Devin making an entrance right in front of us, not happening. <laughs> Just along with everything It looked else. like it, yeah. Yeah, they were clearing the that side. That would have been but, cool. Yeah, Walk-ins like that, maybe oh, have their own music. Mario Lopez showing up. All right, okay. now we know it's really that's a fight. A real, that's a good sign. He must have just got done sparring a wild card. <laughs> yeah. I mean, seriously, how does Mario Lopez have hair like that? Uh, good genetics? Man. Yeah, he's not ready. I'm just admiring his hair for Mario Lopez. <laughs> <laughs> he's at the podium. Mario will be our host today. He will be holding court. He will be introducing the fighters. He will be the one asking the Q&A. If we even get to the Q&A between Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney, a crowded Avalon Theater in Hollywood, California, it is sold out. People... Well, actually, I'm not saying sold out, but it's standing room only. Yeah, they didn't sell tickets for this, which they could have, but yeah. there's fans that are outside waiting just to see a glimpse of the fighters as uh, we're moments away from this. And again, appreciate everybody there and your patience, Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher, and you, and it's officially going to get going in a few minutes. We know the fighters are here. I see Devin. Ryan got off his high horse. <laughs> I mean, good one. Sorry, I'm trying. I'm yeah. delusional. Uh, but they're here. So we will be having the fighters. It's the final press conference. After this, they will not see each other until fight week in Brooklyn, New York. Tickets are available to the general public tomorrow. There is a pre-sale going on right now. Go to the Golden Boy social media accounts so you can find out the special code. That way you can get on it. And Ryan's already been selling tickets to fans or giving tickets away to fans and I, if you follow his instagram he's been sending people cash up all that other stuff so <laughs> i mean i don't need he needs to do that because the fight's going to sell out Doug. this is yeah. going to sell out on the east coast absolutely absolutely like i said the east coast especially uh the sorry, brooklyn no, sorry, new york Doug, area there's, they're there's, starving uh, for big fights there's i guess Cirque du soleil is coming over here for ryan garcia uh he wants he wants to make an entrance he he's he's he, making he it. gets the showbiz side like we've been saying devin is 100 percent focused yeah. on boxing well if he could have just gave us a little bit yeah. of a script that would have helped so I that would have helped too yeah yeah but ryan's he's focused on boxing and entertainment oh it's entertainment no matter what uh devin haney on top moments away from them taking the stage our video crew is on the stage so that's always a good sign as we're moments away from Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, and the final press conference. We know it's supposed to start an hour ago. Oscar DeLoyo said, thank you for your patience. We thank you for the patience. So if you're watching on your phone, make sure you charge it because I think it's going to take another couple minutes because Ryan and Devin are going to go at each other verbally, and then there will be a final pose, all that good stuff. The Golden Boy is busy. I just love the fact that we got fights. Like we've been here when we did a Canelo information uh, yeah. movie or something like that. Like we've all done right, yeah. all kinds of cool things, Doug. And there's nothing like a major fight week that just to get you flowing. Yeah, and the sport needs it. The sport needs as many high-profile fights, especially high-profile fights between young guys. Yeah, these guys are 25. 
Yeah. You know, conceivably, they have at least another five years of their prime ahead of them. Oof. And hopefully, they take advantage of that prime. And the 140 pound division is loaded. I don't think he weighs 140, but I think Mario Lopez is right there. <laughs> He's definitely in fighting shape. Thank you for hanging out with me and Doug. Now, Mario Lopez, go. Take it away. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia is a 12 round fight for the WBC Super Lightweight World Championship that is presented by Golden Boy Promotions in association with Haney Promotions, King Ride Promotions, and Matchroom Boxing. The event will be taking place on Saturday, April 20th on DAZN Pay Per View Live from Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Pre sale tickets are now officially available, and general on sale will begin tomorrow, Friday, March 1st, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. So let's get this press conference officially started here. Please help me welcome to the stage, representing Victorville, California, one of the biggest stars in boxing today, former interim lightweight champion, King Rai Ryan Garcia. All right, now, please help hey, me. Y'all know why I played that song, though. I know Devin's missing P. Diddy right now. <laughs> uh, that part. I, I could have delivered that a little better, but, you know. Please help me now. Welcome to the stage, one of boxing's young superstars, the former undisputed lightweight champion and the current reigning and defending WB super lightweight champion, the dream, Devin Haney.
Okay, now, let's please welcome to the podium a man who had multiple world championships in two weight classes and a former undisputed middleweight champion, boxing hall of famer and golden boy partner, Mr. Bernard Hopkins. First, I'm glad to say that everybody showed up and they're excited and waited uh, patiently till they get here. And listen, this is a super fight of this era, and we all should respect that, including the reporters and also the Instagram reporters, that these guys got together and made this fight happen at record time. Record time. And that's unusual in this business of boxing and the negotiations wasn't as long as everybody expected to be. So Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney decided to go and show the world that they're willing to be great by fighting the best in their division. And we are here. So let's respect that. Anybody in the media, all these social media people from the internet, don't ask me about me and anybody else, whether it's Bill or anybody else, because that be taken and away from this fight and very disrespectful from my perspective because Devin had worked to get where he at, undisputed, to become undefeated, and at this stage to prove his supremacy in this division. So let's understand this is a warning for me. I will walk away from you if we're not talking about this fight, which need to be respected, because I believe the animosity and to prove that the superior guy is me or him, that's up to them. We are here to promote it. We are here to say what we say for our guy and mean it. So let them settle their score on who's the best come April. Thank you. Please now help me welcome one of boxing's top trainers, Derek James, to the podium. Hello, everybody. Hello, LA. I'm just uh, happy to be here. I know it's time is coming, getting closer and closer to the fight. I know everybody's anticipating a great matchup. And I'm looking forward to see Ryan show everything that he has and everything he's grown to be. I know Devin's a great competitor, great fighter. So uh, it takes great fighters to bring the best out of great fighters. So what I expect is a great fight and a great victory. Thank you. Thank you, Derek. Now, the man who helped put this fight together, representing Devin Haney Promotions, father and trainer of Devin Haney, please welcome Mr. Bill Haney to the podium. Well, well, well. I want to give uh, all the blessings and graces to God, Allah, who made this all possible. But once again, it seems like they're trying to piss on your head and tell, it, tell you that it's rain. We did a lot to make this thing happen. I'm glad that Bernard now um, recognizes a commitment of a team, father, manager, and trainer. So we don't want this to go under, looked at that, Everyone else, when someone tells you that you can't do it and you believe in, in yourself, you believe in, in your, your fighter, in my case, my son, who's amazing, he's the best in the world, and we're gonna show him on April 20th. This guy and his antics is going to be the death of Ryan Garcia and the way you guys know him. On April 20th, on, on, on April 20th I, I was in it. You brought some girls and stuff, but they're going to go with us when we leave. So don't worry about that. Now, that was a good one. Guys. That was your mistake with BH the Great. But don't worry, we're going to get to that. Now, the key thing is that on this fight that Ryan has raised his hand when no one else did. Let me point that out. I, I, we really take Ryan Garcia serious. Uh, I think that it's a distraction. He's attempting to appear as a TikToker. I know him as a 12-time national amateur champion. 15. 15, yeah, that's true. <laughs> true, right? Facts. 
Well, 15. Let me excuse me. 15. Thank you, Bill. Now, um, so this will be a fight that I know that he's trying to fight out of that stereotype, and Devin is the perfect guy to do it. Uh, he raised his hand. No one else did. Not Tank, not nobody. He, he listen, whether he tried to back out or not, he's here, and I take him very serious, and on April 20th, it's going to be the death of Ryan Garcia in the way you know it, and you see it. Hey, and shout out to Shea Buttercream and the Shea Butter family, doing a wonderful job Jergens, with the Shea Buttercream. Jergens, man, Jergens. So, Cocoa butter. please let us know, the Shea Buttercream, what about the Shea toupee that your dad is wearing? Now, let me ask you, can you tell us how does the cream work for him? At least I don't have a nappy hair. Oh. Like Don King. Uh, well, you know it's real. What the fuck I know is you that? said is, the is, Don is, King. Is, is that some racist shit? On April twentieth, it's going to be Ryan the Queen. April twentieth, you're going to see a good knockout, and then you're going to wish you didn't say those words. So, go ahead, Don King. Ladies and gentlemen, now let me introduce a man who's not only one of the leading boxing promoters in the game right now. He's a gold medalist, former world champion in multiple weight classes and the man pushing for these types of mega fights, Golden Boy himself, Mr. Oscar De La Hoya. Thank you very much, Mario. Um, guys, welcome to Fight of the Year. We, um, we're really excited to um, finally have Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney square off April 20th. And keep in mind that both guys, both guys have three wins against each other in the amateurs and now this one April 20th will be will be uh, will be one for the ages will be uh, will will show the world who the very best is and what I love about this fight here okay what I love about this fight is that it, it, it takes me back to the days where the best fight the best when I approached uh, the Haney's they were in a thousand percent quick right off the bat I approached Ryan, he was like, let's do this. He wanted to fight Haney, so this is what boxing is all about. This is what Golden Boy is all about, making the best fight the best. It is for a world title. Devin Haney has been an elite world champion for a long time now on the top level. And uh, obviously his talents, his team, uh, everything that he's worked hard for, uh, he's made come true, and um, that's why he is the best. That's why he is one of the best at 140 pounds. You take a you take a look at the the division, the division at 140. I'm talking about the past. I'm talking about champions like Pernell Whitaker, the lineage lineage champions, Devin Haney, Pernell Whitaker, Julio Cesar Chavez. I mean, I'll, I'm not embarrassed to include myself in there also, but. You take a look at that division, and it's one of the best competitive divisions in the world today. And when you talk about Ryan Garcia, who's making the noise, who's creating this buzz for boxing on a global level, you combine both fighters, the best, you combine Ryan, and I'm telling you, April 20th, you will have the biggest, biggest event in boxing history. And that's what we're excited about. We're excited about evening the score. It's three and three. And I was watching those fights, and you, sh you guys should go watch those fights as well on YouTube. Check them out. They were competitive, they were tough, and they're three and three. So now April 20th, we will see who comes out on top. That's what I'm excited about, so. Um, before we introduce Ryan and, 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 and Devin Haney, I would like to introduce to you a young man hailing from South El Monte here in L.A. Um, he's not, he'll, he will be fighting the co-main event in New York. We're super excited. A record of 29-0, and 0, uh, undefeated, and that is Arnold Barbosa Jr. Arnold, come on on and say a few words, brother. How's it going, LA? Um, you know, I just want to, you know, thank Golden Boy. I want to thank the Zone, you know, for for allowing me to showcase my my talent on this uh, great card. 
you know, with that being said, you know, I, I don't know what's going on here with these two, but, um, you know, you got, you know, doing, they're doing their press conferences and, and they're doing all their little shows. You know, I'm in the gym grinding. You know, um, that, that's what I take pride in. Um, you know, you got Devin trying to be there, Ryan, doing his jump rope. You know, you got Ryan getting flowers thrown at him. You know what I mean? While I'm in the gym <laughs> grinding, you know what I mean? So, so with that being said, man, you know, uh, I'm, here, I'm here to showcase my talent as the co-main event. If it happens to one of these guys pull out, I'll be ready to step in and give them a tougher fight than they would have that day. So uh, with that being said, underdog mentality, thank you. Thank you very much, my man. And now, let me introduce to you, I mean, the first time I saw Ryan fight, um, it was special. It really was. The speed, the one-punch power, the knockout power, I mean, he truly has it all. And now, coming off the biggest pay-per-view last year and stepping into another huge major pay-per-view. He uh, is willing to be the very best. He's willing to fight the toughest guys. He wants to prove to the world, prove to you guys that he is the best, and that is Ryan Garcia. Ryan. First, I want to give glory to Jesus Christ. I want, to lift, I want to lift the room up with the energy of inviting the Holy Spirit in here to lead uh, what, I, what, what I should say. So that's what I'm going to do. You know, I, I want to invite the Holy Spirit to come into this room and fill this room with peace and, and, and just to be really direct. What the fuck happens to your voice? So at the end of the day, I've been screaming for these promos, but I'm not even going to react. At the end of the day, you know, I want to clarify some Stop things. Stop the cult, nigga. It's fucking up your voice. I, 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 want, I, I, want, to, I, want, I want to clarify some things. I want to clarify some things. I don't do cocaine. I would do. I would do a live drug test. What do you do? I would do a what live do you do? drug test. What I, do you do? I drink and I smoke weed, and so has the majority of this room. So has the majority of this room. What 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 kind of example are you for the younger generation watching this? Talking about you drinking, you smoke weed, weed making, is that, legal, making bro. that cool. Bro, you, the younger generation look up to us. What are you, what are you talking about? Why are you making, trying to hard. publicize you? Drink whatever you do behind closed the doors. You do behind closed about. doors. Anyways, why are you trying to? This is young kids. Hey. It's, it's young kids watching us. It's young kid watching us. Mom, you good, mom? Thank you. Hey. Yeah. Thank you. Thank it's you. people Thank watching you. us. What are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, that part. That part. That part. That part. You finally got somebody raising your hand saying, "I'm real. I'm like this. I do drink. I do smoke. Now what?" It's okay. Guess what? We all have our flaws and we all evolve as people. Look at, I'm 25 years old. You gotta remember the weight of the world sometimes feels like it's on my shoulders. You know, you know, you, you, I don't know how many people have been 25 years old and made $100 million in their life and can do whatever they want. I wanna see what you would do in my shoes. Probably a lot more than some weed. <laughs> but this is what I'm saying. Like, I wanna, I wanna invite you guys, I'm gonna try to make it short what happened in my life as a little, little, little baby, defiled as a little baby. Then after that, my family loses everything. We're sleeping in cars, five kids, one bedroom, with a dream. And with, and with God, we, want, we, just, we just let God lead our life. And through that whole process, I grinded and I earned every, everything I have today, I earned it. I didn't, nobody gave me a handout. We never, I never had money, you know? I'm, I'm, just, I'm really a small town boy. You know, and then I just grew up as a man, and you start evolving, you start being a leader, and then, you know, I got to clean some stuff up. I've, maybe I didn't make the right move, you know, the, the other day, posting that picture, you know, me lighting it up. You know, bad move, my bad, you know, um, but you keep it moving. You know, life, you know, I just want to let God, you know, it, if I'm not the man I'm supposed to be, that means God's not done yet. Right. And, and I feel like, look it. Everybody has the same chance I have. And I just invite you to get to know Jesus Christ. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ryan. So at just 25 years of age, I mean, think about this. There's a lot, of, there's a lot that Devin Haney hasn't accomplished in the sport of boxing. Uh, he's undefeated. He's a two-time division world champion. And he fights anyone and everyone. 
And this is what's special about this fight. And, and I'm going to keep repeating myself because fighters today, every fighter out there, maybe not every single one, but there's fighters out there, the majority of them do not want to give the fight fans the fights that we deserve to watch. And Ryan Garcia and Devin Haney came together, and we're giving you guys, man, this fight's going to be amazing on, a, on, on, on April 20th. He's willing to be the very best and fighting the very best, coming off of coming off wins like uh, Cambosos and Regis Prograce, you know, fighters like Lomachenko, um, daring to be great. And that's the bottom line. And it's very rare in this sport. So it is my pleasure to introduce to you. And he's been undisputed lightweight champion of the world. And he now is the current WBC super lightweight champion of the world. He is the dream, Devin Haney. First off, I want to you know, thank Allah, you know, alhamdulillah. Uh, you know, this is a, a dream come true of mine. You know, I always dreamed to, to be here one day. And uh, now I'm finally here, you know, um, I have respect for Ryan, you know, because me and we shared the ring six times as kids, we came up together. But um, over these last, you know, few days, I lost a lot of respect for him because one, we have a fight. The world is tuning in. So look, look how much media here. Look how many people are here to, to watch us. So it's like, I'm a, I'm a true professional. I try to be professional in, 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 in everything I do. And I'm not saying that, you know, I come from, you know, my, my dad, you know, he has not made the, the best choices in life, but he molded me to be the man that I am today. And that's why I always try to, you know, come off the, the best way I can to give the fans and the kids and the people, you know, the, and lead, lead by a good example. On the other hand, we got this guy who's doing the complete opposite. And like I said, I don't know, I don't know what he, what, what he comes from. I'm, I don't know what he, I don't know. Oh, okay, but listen, he- Slow down, cutie. Whatever, 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 hey, you. whatever he's going through. Slow down, whatever, slow down. Whatever he's too. going through. I love you, slow down. shout out you, I love whatever you. you. What, what, whatever you're doing Ms. behind Garcia, closed doors, can you let him talk you, behind closed doors? I love you, mom. Ma'am, would you like to come up and talk? This is Ryan Garcia's mom. This is Ryan Garcia's mom. Okay, all right. Hey, let me ask you. Listen, when you like were the said, judge, like, wait, when you were the judge and the referee and everything that you guys did in LDB and, come and, and on, the Bill, stop no, well, no, 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 wait, 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 no, 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 because you know what, hey, weren't you a pimp, hey, weren't you a pimp, listen, hey, listen, no, 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 weren't you a pimp, okay, you were a pimp, no, no, listen, when, 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 uh, when Devin was, Haney what kind of, what, came to visit uh, Ryan, uh, he listen, brought no, these all these you, girls around listen, him. Okay. You know, he's just a well, pimp. What, listen, what, once what a pimp, showing, always a pimp. What I'm showing the world is what you're supposed to do as a father, no matter what you make choices. What you're seeing 100%. is the product of a guy that made a lot of bad choices, but he's standing right here. What you have in them, they're in, they're acting like they're imposters. No. They were, they were, a, they're a great family, the Garcias. They've been in boxing. He was a 15 time amateur champion. What you're saying is wrong. You're creating a narrative that's different than what we are. We are a father and son team that stayed down and we don't do that. You said all this pimp shit. No, 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 no. But that's, but I don't respect the man with the toupee over there, your husband, because he's bringing up the bullshit. Okay. Now, how you gonna keep it real? You're a nappy now, head, the, motherfucker. The, nappy head, I sound like some racy that's shit. Yeah. Well, I, day, hey, listen, that's, that's what he's looking us, like. Us, really us, that's that's what he's looking us, like. Us, I'm us, sorry. You really got a two pay. You got a nappy head. Listen, us African American Americans, we have we have more coarse coarse hair than than, than you Latinos. But that don't make our hair nappy. But that does not make our hair nappy. It's called facts. So, so don't get it confused. I don't I don't care about all facts or whatever you got to say. At the end of the day, we're African Americans and we have a different course of hair. That does not mean that our hair is nappy. Look 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 look. Let's people, keep it moving. Let's people, just keep it moving. These, these, these people moving. are not who you who, who you guys think they are. This this guy is talking about nappy hair. What like how when and what in what world is is that okay to talk about a black man's hair? He has, we're talking about a toupee. We did not ever say about a black man. Who cares? Who cares? We're talking Let's about move hair. on. Let's move on. Who cares? Like we're on a subject of hair, bro. Listen, I'm tripping. Yeah. Listen. That's fighting Ryan. Stick to that, Devin. Listen. Come on. Hey, Both of you guys are professional. Stick to that. 
That's all. Come on. Let's keep it real. That was, that was, that was very unprofessional. But at the end of the day, like I said, I'm happy to be here. I worked so hard to get here. I sacrificed uh, a, a lot to be here. And at the end of the day, on April 20th, the world will see. Though My hard work will pay off. And we, we getting this guy out of boxing. He's a fucking clown. Him, him and his family. Hey, 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 Mario, 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 Mario. Now, now I'm gonna ask you this: If you're not Ryan the liar, then you said that you seen Devin get wobbled. If you're not lying, Ryan, you seen Devin get wobbled by Tank on there. Did you see Tank get stopped? And did you see me get paid when Devin when Devin stopped Tank? What question? If you seen the tape, I, 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 I told you he's a liar. No, I don't know uh, what he's asking. Yeah. I didn't even did you see the tape? I was on my phone. Did Floyd, did Floyd show you the tape? Uh, yes, he showed me the tape. Did you see Devin get? Did you see Devin stop Tank and no, see us get paid the money? No. No. So you only saw part of the tape? No. Maybe. I don't know. It was obviously clipped, but at the end of the fucking tape, Devin was getting his ass knocked out. I'm not cat. Why am we, I going to lie? Watch, we watched Tank knock you out. The world seen Tank no. knock you out. You yeah, quit. That's good. You okay. quit. You quit. The world seen you take a knee and quit like a bitch. And damn, stop. All right, all right, damn, gentlemen. stop the guy that stop you. Gentlemen, we're going to continue with some You're going to get questions. stopped. A couple questions for uh, each of the fighters as we keep it going there. Um, Ryan, Devin, uh, well, you actually just heard him call you a, a, a quitter, but do you think, Ryan, that Devin's ever faced anyone with your speed and power, and how confident are you now at 140, being in this weight class? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really confident. I mean, well, I'm confident no matter what, you know. Um, I feel great at this weight. I feel healthy. Um, you can see it on my energy levels and how strong I am. But, um, you know, I'm confident no matter what. But yeah. Devin. Say it louder, please. Devin, we This motherfucker uh, needs some, some, some coke to talk. He needs some alcohol to talk. This fuck motherfucker sound dumb as fuck. No, I'm on like 20 black coffees, no cap. All black coffees. <laughs> That's what gets me going. Coke. It, it looks like I'm a coke because I. Never mind. Devin. I don't even look that. Yeah, you're right. I don't even. Yeah, do I need to explain myself? Probably not. Huh? You know why you got to. Hey, you know me, Demi. I love you. Truth. You were with me 24/7. Have you ever seen me do cocaine? Never in your life, huh? I love you. What happened? Ever? Fuck out of here, motherfucker. Hey, what if I came up there and I beat the fuck out of you, motherfucker? I bet you won't do it. I bet you won't do it. Go do it. You ain't gonna do shit. Sit your little ass down. Devin, we, I don't even know who you are, bro. I, I can't even see you, bro. I don't know where these voices are coming from, bro. Yeah. That's the voices in your head. <laughs> Devin, we've seen your uh, we've seen your progression over the last few years, and and do you feel that we've seen the best of Devin Haney yet? Will this be the fight where you truly peak it this way? No, nah, the world hasn't seen the best Devin Haney. Uh, every fight, I get, I'm getting better and better. Um, I was at 135 for a long time, you know, killing myself to make the weight. At 140, the world's seen, you know, how much better I am at uh, 140. And uh, on April 20th, I'm going to be even better, inshallah. And Ryan, obviously this rivalry has gotten uh, pretty personal between you guys. You obviously have fought each other since you were kids. Is, is this fight, being that it's personal, the most important fight of your life right now? This is a huge moment. Um, I don't know if it's the most important time in my life. I've been through a lot of important times in my life, so I would have to like go on my memory bank, but it's, it's, it's up there for sure. Hey, Ryan, you, you're not gonna pull out though. We don't, do, we, do we need Arnold Barbosa for the backup opponent or are you, gonna, are you gonna show up on April 20th? Barclay, April 20th, are you gonna be there? No comment? Ryan, are you gonna be there? Or are you, <laughs> or are you gonna go on your phone? Devin. Rye. Queen Rye, are you gonna be there? Hi. Are you having a panic attack over there, Ryan? What's going on? Devin. <laughs> Devin, just a few years ago, um, you were being called by a lot of people the, the email champion, and now you have victories over Lomachenko, Cambosis, Progre. Will a victory over Ryan cement your place as the face of boxing, do you feel? Yeah, I mean, um, 
at the end of the day, you know, Ryan is just a, a, another opponent. At the end of the day, he's another a, a name off, off my resume. But um, it's a huge fight. Is it, does it fight mean everything to me right now where I'm at in my career? 100%. But um, Ryan is no different than, than any other opponent. Ryan, uh, Devin's coming off a... Is that Dora? Oh, go back. Okay. Ryan, De Devin's coming off of a, a great performance against Regis Progray. Do you think he has the power to hurt you, or do you expect a more cautious Devin Haney come April 20th, so he has to be leery of your power? It's on his, uh, you know, his record and, and what I know about him. Um, no, I'm not worried about his power. Uh, that's, what, uh, that's what it is. So, yeah, I mean, I'm just looking, maybe you got power now. You just never know, but it's all good. And, and, and Devin Ryan stated that he's going to retire if you knock him out in the first round. So can we expect a more aggressive Listen, Devin? Ryan might retire before we even get to the fight. So I'm not only fucking up. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, Oscar, would you like to say the final word? That's good, that's it, all right. <laughs> all right, guys, um, April 20th, it's gonna go down, three and three. Who's gonna win that fourth? We shall, we shall wait and see. Now, uh, thank you, Arnold Barbosa, for being here. It's gonna be a stacked card from top to bottom. We'll announce shortly, tickets, everything. Uh, let's now face the fighters. Thank you, guys. Gentlemen, if you can get ready for the face-off. Expected that Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, the final press conference. We're gonna effort to get both of the fighters over here to speak to them. Uh, war of words back and forth. Uh, some animosity built up from the amateur days. People, family members, chirping at each other. Uh, it's only gonna get better. April 20th, Barclay Center in Brooklyn, New York. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney. I'm Bethel Duran here, back at the. Avalon Theater in Hollywood, California. So I've been told that Devin Haney is going to make his way over here right now. It's been a heck of a day, an interesting day, as Devin Haney could be joining him right now. Devin's going to grab the microphone. All right, Dev, what'd you think of that? Man, um, it was an interesting press conference, but um, man, I'm ready for the fight. You okay? We had to wait over an hour. What was going on there? Where were we? No, I mean, I knew that Ryan was doing this little parade, so we let him do his parade, and then the, the press conference started. All right, so the press conference gets going, going back and forth. Yes, you guys have some animosity. Yes, you are concerned that he might not show up April 20th. The world is, the world is. Okay, well, let's, okay. Yeah, okay. the world is concerned if he's going to show up. What not makes you think me. that he's not going to get here? Look at him, look at it. Look, this, the stuff that he's doing is, is abnormal. It's not regular, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not common for somebody that's getting ready for, you know, the biggest fight of their life. Do you like him at all? No, nah, I mean, I used to have respect for him, but now, like, I just lost all respect for him. And, and 
uh, on April 20th. After I don't, I don't want nothing to do with him after that. What if you guys fight again? I don't, I don't see us fighting. Again. I see myself beating him so easily, so so bad that it won't be no point of, of a rematch. When you look at his eyes, what do you see? Ryan, fucking uh, uh, a guy that's out of his mind. Out of his mind. Out of his fucking mind. Do you think this is gonna happen? Inshallah, it does. Kevin Haney. Final words that you have for Ryan Garcia without anybody interrupting you, man. Nah, nobody's going to be chirping. Nobody's gonna I ain't got nothing to say to him. At the end of the day, I hope he shows up to, uh, on April 20th. All right, Devin Handy. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being a professional as always and showing up today because yesterday I saw your tweet. You weren't showing up, though. Nah, listen, I wasn't going to I, I wasn't gonna show up. It was because it was like, this guy. We're all looking at they're, social they're, media. They're playing in my face. So it's like, what's the, what's the point of showing up if this guy's not even going to, he may not even make it into April 20th. So they're not respecting you? He's not respecting himself. Dev, appreciate it, man. Thank you, bro. Devin Haney, quick to the point, not respecting himself, his opinion of Ryan Garcia. We will be joined by Ryan in a few moments as Devin Haney from Las Vegas has his crews. They're walking out. Heaven brought a crowd here to the Avalon Theater in Southern California. Champ Devin Haney walking out right now. And the things that he was saying about Ryan, the personal side, and what he's Ryan's antics the last couple of days. But at the end of the day, we Personal. will have a fight. A fight. April 20th on the lobby. Making sure to listen to Jane Mercia to let us know what's going on. All right. All right. So fighters will be talking. April 20th at Barclays Center live on the zone is where you're gonna want to check out that fight. Arnold Barbosa was on the day. So as Arnold said, if somebody bells, I'll be there. So what will happen? Devin Haney said he will be there. Ryan Garcia, he's not expecting him there. It's an interesting, interesting dynamic between the two that started when they were kids in the amateurs. It's escalating here as professionals. Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, April 20th at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. It's going to be on fire that week as the two fighters that had their six amateur fights. I'm not one to get into like what they did in amateurs. You know, who really cares about the fights or the records? But the animosity has been built up over the years, so much so that Bill and Henry Garcia are going back and forth. And we know in the sport of boxing, boxing dads, well, they love to chirp and get after it. But today it was really personal. The fighters saw each other for the last time. They will not be in the same room again until fight week in April in uh, New York, as Ryan Garcia, I've been told, is going to be making his way over here right now. Make sure you go to the Golden Boy social media pages to see where you can get information for the tickets. A pre-sale is going on today. There's a special code available for you. Tickets will go well at the Barclays Center. So Ryan Garcia, the interest that he had the day. I saw the, the tweets on the DAZN account. Look, I've always wanted to work in horse racing. Would love to go to the Kentucky Derby. Seeing Ryan Garcia in the entrance with a horse, the white horse in the white suit. Like, we're in Hollywood. You see a lot of different things. I'm pretty sure they haven't seen a fighter show up to a press conference on a horse. And uh, I was just thinking, man, remember when Prince not seen used to show up, his crazy entrances? But those were for a fight. Ryan has actually come into a fight on a crown, on a throne, uh, throne before, but not a press conference. So the kid, look, whatever it is he's doing on social media, we're talking about it. He's got the antics going, and he says, as his post this morning when he was running to Griffith Park, you know, 99% of it is him trolling. He's got our attention. We're paying attention to him. We're talking to him. But what's he going to do on April 20th when he's in the ring with Devin Haney? Ryan coming off a victory, a stoppage of Oscar de Duarte in Houston, Texas. Uh, before that, he lost to Tank Davis where he was stopped. So here's the arrival, if you didn't see it, earlier this afternoon. Ryan. Coming over from the, his hotel in Hollywood, right there, you see the Pantages Theater, we're at the Avalon Theater, uh, right there on Hollywood and Vine, shows up on a white horse. Yeah. He had the dancers, he had the hula hoops, he had the theatrics, he had everything. As he tweeted earlier, you're not going to want to miss it, we didn't. It took him an hour to get here, an hour and 15 to be exact, but he got here. So the uh, entrance, the appearance, and this is what the kid does. He moves the needle. He hits people running in the middle of the street, stopping traffic for his appearance. And 
I don't think the last time I can remember seeing a hula hoop. But the horse was not allowed inside the venue. And there's another dude with a crown right there. All right. <laughs> uh, so the horse got to the entrance of the Avalon, and then he was carried on the shoulders of his security guards inside the venue. Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, April 20th at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York. Tickets are on sale today. Pre-sale, general public tomorrow. Arnold Barbosa, who we talked to earlier in the afternoon, said he's going to be on that card, also at 140 pounds. Uh, that'll be a good card. The rest of the card will be announced pretty soon. So that's what we're waiting on right now for Ryan Garcia to make his way over to us right now. He's on the stage taking pictures with his family. As, uh, you'll be able to see all the pictures by our good friend Chris Escada, who has the Golden Boy photography ready to go, locked up, and go check out all that information. We heard Oscar DeLoya and Bernard Hopkins talking about how easy a fight it was to be made because they wanted the fight. So these two know that they were in a collision course eventually as professionals, especially the way that uh, Haney winning championships, going to Australia, winning belts, defending him, all that stuff. And he has an opportunity to continue his career and his perfect record against Ryan Garcia. Two fighters, as we mentioned earlier today, that started their careers in the small bar rooms of Tijuana. Bill Haney's tell the story that he was paying for his son to be on cards. Ryan, a teenager under the age of 18, because in California, the law used to be that you had to be 18 years old to be a professional fighter. And so they would go down to Mexico where you could turn 16, pro as a 16 year old, or in case, 15, and that's where they were doing it. So Ryan, four or five fights in Tijuana. Then he came, started fighting in the Southern California club scene and eventually signing that promotional contract with Golden Boy Promotions. It is a Golden Boy debut on the Joe Smith, Bernard Hopkins undercard. And here he is now working his way from the club scene to the mega fights. As Ryan's not shy to talk about how much money he's made. A lot of money on the line. His last fight reportedly against Tank Davis made $30 million. Ryan, kid's working it. Kid out of Victorville, California. Uh, who trained with his father, Henry, in the amateurs. He used to drive around all over the United States. Same with Devin Haney. His father had a dream for his son to be a professional and be a champion, and that's what we have now. So two kids who started with humble roots now on the big stage, and they'll see them in no bigger stage than possible in New York. Come on now. Fights in New York special. Brooklyn is going to be crazy popping good on April 20th. So we're still waiting for Ryan Garcia to make his way over here as we continue to just wonder, what the heck did we see right now? There was a lot. I was looking at the, the Twitter accounts and going back and forth. The shout out to everybody, all the boxing media that did not get here. Uh, I see all the tweets. There was a lot of professional feel. My boy Justin Shackle, who does a good job also with the Yankee broadcast. I see you. So all that good stuff. So as always, thank you so much. Ryan Garcia should be making his way. Oh, so you know what? I decided. Ryan made me wait. I don't want to wait for him. So Ryan Garcia will not be making his way over here. You will be seeing him on his social media, of course. And also make sure you go to the Golden Boy account to get information about the pre-sale tickets. April 20th is where you will see Ryan Garcia take on Devin Haney. Golden Boy Promotions, Oscar DeLoya bringing you that mega fight. The WBC Super Lightweight Championship will be on the line. Devin Haney. Ryan Garcia. Thanks to everybody who watching. All the crew behind the scenes. Thank you so much. From the Avalon Theater in Hollywood, California. From my partner, Doug Fisher. I'm Bethel Duran. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the 20th. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world. The four